Civil War is better than the Avengers and Age of Ultron. I, I would agree with that. Okay. Cap should have let them end Bucky. I yeah, cause it, yes, he's I gotta agree. go, dude. He's like a rabid dog, like bro. You've <laughs> you've bit every member of this family. Right. You even bit Grammy. Okay, yep. Grammy's eighty two. You bit her. She didn't even know yep. whose dog you were. She has dementia. You fucking bit her too. <laughs> Damn it, Bucky. You yeah, know, yeah, it should let him go at some point. Pull them, pull the old yeller, dude. Bring him out back <laughs> behind the shed and just you know, there you go. Been it been a long run, you know. But yep. um, anyway. All right, all right. Welcome to Only Comics. I'm Mike. This is Adrian. What up, man? What up? What's up, dude? Uh, fall is here, baby. It is, it, bro. I'm, I'm loving it already. Yeah? Yeah. I love this stuff. This yeah. second favorite season of the year. Is it? Okay. First being winter. Okay. Winter. It, yeah. it, now, that I feel like this changes the older you get, right? Because, like, when you were 10 years old, you'd probably be like summer, right? Um, I didn't even think about <laughs> stuff when I was young. Okay. I was just... Out and about doing didn't stuff. matter what you know, season didn't, it didn't was. Didn't matter what it was. Got dude. it. But well, you also are from the south. Yeah, I'm from here. So in when in you know in Connecticut as a kid, summer's the best because right. there's no school. It's hot. Right. But as you get older, yeah, I'm with you, dude. I'm uh, fall, spring, winter. Mm -hmm. yep. Summer's my least favorite. Yeah, it is. But um, I don't. I know some people are like um, you know, being from the south, people move up mm. in the um in the summertime. Yeah, you know, uh, to New England right to get away from the extreme heat. Of the, of yeah, you'll have of a different South. summer down there. Right. But then, about this time, they start migrating back down because mm. it's, you know, getting colder here. Oh, yeah. And then it's cooler down the there. The snowbirds, as they call them. Yes, the yes, snowbirds. Yes, the snowbirds. But um, no snowbirds here. No, we're here. We're here for the season. We're here for the whole year. We're on this episode 73. So nice. we're getting up there, dude. Nice. Yeah, we're getting old. Um, so as a show, but anyways, one thing that's not getting old is comic news and rumors. A lot of stuff going on this week. So, um, there's a new movie that, um, Adrian knocked Deadpool and Wolverine out of the top spot this week. So, really? um, yeah, now don't, don't, don't be concerned though. Deadpool Wolverine still brought in millions, right? Sure. Of course. But, um, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Okay. The sequel okay. to Beetlejuice. Um, dropped this past weekend and looks like it's going to finish over a hundred million in domestic box office first weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually went to see this movie. Did you? Yeah. Now we've not talked about Beetlejuice here cause I, I, dude, I'm sure if you look, there's probably a Beetlejuice comic book somewhere. Sure. Right. Um, but the original Beetlejuice movie, 88, I love that movie. You a yeah. fan of that movie? I am. I am. Uh, first intro to, uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah. 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 I would say he's a better better Beetlejuice than uh, Batman, you know. I would agree with that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I like his Batman, but sure. just not as much as, you know, my boy Battinson, you know. Yeah, well, um, there's that. <laughs> there is that. Or for you, Christian Bale. <laughs> right. Know? But uh, I went to see the sequel, and I will say this. It was not as good as the first one. Of course. It, was, um, it wasn't bad, but at the end of it, I, I just felt like it was unnecessary. Really? Because... I don't know about you, but after watching Beetlejuice, I've seen it, you know, dozens of times. Right. It's like a Halloween movie, right? Yeah. Probably getting ready to watch it pretty soon. But I've never finished that movie and felt like, ooh, I want a sequel. Mm -hmm. Did you? No, nah, nah, not at all. Some movie, some movies, like, they're done. You're like, oh, shit, I'd love to see a part two, right. right? Like, maybe you felt that way when you saw Matrix. I don't know. I did not feel that you way. You didn't? I, okay. No, I, I, it felt complete. Got it. Um, you know, Beetlejuice felt complete. Yeah. I mean, when you when you walk up, be like, wait a minute, something's missing. Uh, you know, right. That but that doesn't necessarily mean that the movie was good and that there should be another one. Right. That just means that they didn't close it out properly. Correct. They left some open loops in in their movie, yep. which is basically a bad movie. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so um, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, though, big opening weekend, so that's cool. I mean, one, one thing that was cool about the movie, you know, Tim Burton directed it. I think mm. he wrote it as well. It felt very Tim Burton-ish. It, it, you know, the, there was a lot of scenes that looked cool. Michael Keaton was probably the highlight of the movie, honestly. His oh, Beetlejuice sure. was just as good as he was nice. back in 88, you know. Nice. Um, one of the downfalls was, for me, Winona Ryder. So, you've seen Stranger Things? Yes, I have. Okay. She's in Stranger Things. She, she plays Joyce. Real old. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you know how she acts in Stranger Things? Like, she's having, a, she's on the verge of a panic attack every four seconds. Right, right. Everything, she's worried. Oh, my God, my son, he's in the wall. I put these Christmas lights on. Like, she's just panicking, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, 
That's how she acts in this movie too. The whole time. It's, so so does that mean that that's how she ha- has become? I, I guess so. You know, you know how I, I mean. You know, there's some actors <laughs> like you know we'll, we'll actually talk about it in a little bit. Josh Brolin, where they have a persona like. This guy's good at being funny. This guy's good at being angry, right? right. She's good at playing sh- like she's on the verge of a panic attack. Right. Unfortunately, for me, it got annoying. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm in my own boat there. But um, so but the cool thing, Deadpool Wolverine still kicking ass at the box office, right? Mm-hmm. They are, dude. They right now are the twenty third highest grossing movie of all time. Wow. So you know we we talk about a lot. Some people, this movie's got. I think mixed reviews, like from we look, even looking at the Rotten Tomato scores, the critics don't like it as much as the audience, which we realize that that happens, you uh-huh. know. Um, but the fact that this movie, in a time when the MCU movies were not doing well, and it continues to move up these charts, like, dude, there's only 22 movies in history that have grossed more than this at the worldwide box office. Wow. One of them still, um, well, actually, just leaving theaters and, and um, it's available for purchase now inside out too. That's number nine overall. The funny thing is a lot of this top 10 MCU Marvel movies, really? Avatar is still number one. Cause they'll just re-release it whenever they need to, to, you know, rate those right. numbers up End games. Number two with 2.7 avatar two is number three with 2.3 billion Titanic. Dude, James Cameron dominates this shit. Right. Titanic 2.2 billion star Wars force awakens 2 billion infinity war 2 billion. So there's four movies in history that have done over two billion at the mm-hmm. box office. Spider-Man: No Way Home is number six at one point nine. Jurassic World one point six. Um, then you go up, but Deadpool Wolverine do their one point two six nine. We projected what one point four million yeah, for this movie. Like that, yeah. I I think it. I still say it's going to get there. Sure. Now one point four would put it fifteen overall. Mm-hmm. Bump it up right above Age of Ultron, which we reviewed last week. Um, but it's just, you know, cool to see and, and just insane to think about characters that we watch, you know, read at on comic books when we were kids, animation, and now they're in the theater being the 23rd top movie of all time. Right. When I don't know about you, but if, when I was a kid, if I asked a random person who Wolverine was, they wouldn't know who the fuck I was talking about. Right. right. And now it's household name. So yep, crazy. It. I, I still kind of wish it. No, I, I, not kind of. <laughs> I still wish that. Um, all these things were still in control of Marvel, though, mm. as opposed to Disney. Yeah. Yep. It was a different day. Well, I guess we'll, we'll just have to live in our nostalgia, Adrian. Uh, I guess so. Uh, fanta- speaking of nostalgia, Fantastic Four, uh, Fantastic Four First Steps is the name of this movie. Um, there's some rumors about the team's origin and, I guess, lack thereof in this movie. So uh, the, the rumor is that Marvel will skip the team's origin in the movie. Mm-hmm. We're going to pick up with them as established heroes, but maybe we'll get some flashbacks as to, you know, how they got their powers, which I am all for because we've said this, you know, before every damn superhero movie doesn't need to be an origin. Right. 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 They're, they're, they're listening. Yeah. Well, they are watching, obviously. Right, yeah. um, but how do you feel? You're a big Fantastic Four guy, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like, because, <clears throat> you know, their movies are not well received. Right. You know, with, with Spider-Man, Batman, not every movie was great, but we have some really good movies. Mm-hmm. We've seen really good origins, so it's like we don't need to see it again. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that even though these the Fantastic Four hasn't really been done justice on screen, are you still okay with skipping the origin and picking them up as established heroes? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, <clears throat> we don't need to see. Um, there, some people are out there so much that you don't need an origin. Yep. Echo, you need an origin on. Right. Right. Fantastic Four, <clears throat> you don't need an origin because it's going to evolve. It's going to reveal itself mm. in a movie or any subsequent movies or any cross pollinations of movie movies. Right? Yeah. All of that stuff will come out. So no, I'm I'm very cool with them skipping yeah. the origin. Right. Because do I mean I'm sure we'll see some flashbacks. Like they're going to explain it to someone at some point in this movie, right? Like they'll make it so that in a few minutes we get to see them flying through space on their mission and right. whatever happens to you know however they show here. But it doesn't need to be. We don't need to live it moment by moment. Right. It's like the average movie you watch. You don't see an origin for characters. You're no. figuring out as you go. That's it. I mean, yeah. 
I don't know why this one hit me, but you got, well, Beetlejuice, for example. Mm -hmm. We didn't see no origin of Beetlejuice in the original movie. You know, this couple, they moved to Connecticut. They Mm -hmm. die. That's what happens to move to Connecticut, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And then they're they're stuck in this house. And then, you know, Beetlejuice doesn't show up till like two thirds into the movie. Right. You don't get his origin. You don't know why he's, you know, dead, not, why he's living in this model. You have Mm -hmm. no fucking clue. Right. But we still love it, right? So we don't need every, we don't need to explain everything. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, it, it's also like, it, it would be nice to have something different to where you watch a movie and there's heroes that are already established. Mm-hmm. Like Iron Man was cool, but one of the things about Iron Man was it was just Iron Man. Mm-hmm. We had no other heroes in the back. Like he was the first one, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm all for this dude. And I think with Iron Man, the, uh, first of all, they had to modernize it. Yep. Right. Uh, because the, ri- the original one was done in, I think Vietnam um, mm. you know, he was taken care of, you know, by some guy in Vietnam and all the other kind of stuff. So they had to modernize it. Right. So that kind of made it necessary to do a Iron Man origin. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, dude, I mean, we good. Yep, absolutely. So the DCU, this is um, you know, James Gunn's running this. We we I don't want I almost want to say we hear a lot about them, but we don't because they're not in the news much, but we do know they're working on um, Superman Legacy yep. shooting wrapped up uh, about a month ago. That's going to hit theaters around the same time as Fantastic Four next year, July. Mm-hmm. They're also working on a, a show we talked about here um, called Lanterns, right? This is where you're going to have an older Hal Jordan as a mentor to um, John Stewart. Okay. okay. So they casted Hal Jordan already. I'm going to give you his casting, Adrian. So brace yourself. Josh Brolin. How do you feel about Josh Brolin playing Hal Jordan? Now, before you answer, they are describing him as a older, gruff, no-nonsense mentor to a younger and reckless Jon Stewart. I've given up on um, <laughs> predicting what they – because you, you just don't know. Right. And only thing I can say is they have successfully thus far. When they pick the right actor mm-hmm. to do the job, they have been successful in whatever yeah. portrayal um, they decide to do. Got so it. Josh Brolin, I mean, I, I can see him I can see him making it work. Yeah, okay. Know? Um, different though, right? Like you, you know more about the Green Lanterns than I do. But Hal Jordan is the he's the kind of goofball one, right? Like, mm, he's not goofball. He's a he's a pilot. You know, okay. he's he's a he's a uh, like a test pilot. Yeah. So he's he's like a like a Tom Cruise kind of maverick kind of a guy. Okay. Um. So he's that. He's not like the goofball. Okay. Uh, guy Gardner is the goofball. That's okay. That's who I'm. You know, the of. the reckless one. Yes. Hal Jordan is more a bit more responsible, but. And and I don't I don't think he could have gotten the stature as the greatest lantern mm-hmm. in lantern history by being a guy Gardner, right? Got it. Okay, so, that's who I was thinking. Yeah. So that being said, I, I could see Josh because if he's older, I mean, you if if you were this like star pilot when you were younger and now you're older, you're kind of out of the limelight. I mean, I could see him having a reason to be a little gruff and, and yeah. no nonsense. And yeah. now if that's character, you're that's what I was you know talking about earlier with um, Winona Ryder, like. Dude, you want someone who's older, gruff, and annoyed at everything? Josh Brolin's your guy. Right. right. Like, think I when I hear that, I think of Cable. Mm-hmm. And um, now, here's the thing. No, this is going to break your rule. Yep. It's Josh Brolin has played Thanos. Yep. Cable. And now he's going to play Hal Jordan. Three, Adrian. Well, apparently then then I listen and only no, not all enough <laughs> things, but you know whatever. What are you gonna do? Yeah, um, but you know we, we our rules are very fluid here, right? So if he knocks us out of the park, we might go. You know what? It's a great I, idea. <laughs> I well, I'll never think that, but it's it's like, dude, aren't there other people? Yeah. Uh, again, you know this goes back. What were we talking about? Um, you know, year one of uh, only comics early on in only comics. Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, there's got to be a pool of actors out there that can play right. a Hal Jordan. Come yeah. on. Well, it's um, it's going to be Josh Brolin, according to this rumor. And now the the other thing that they, so so who's going to be um the um John St- John Stewart uh, John Stewart um no. Denzel Washington? Come on, man. <laughs> Jeez. Morgan Freeman, <laughs> <laughs> nice young guy in his prime. You know, no. get him out there. Do they cast you as jo- as John Stewart? Um, no. I yeah yeah see it I can see I, it I can do that you know I mean at this point who cares right I, well I mean 
You, you can bring in Kevin Hart. Yeah, we, yeah, we care. <laughs> we we, we definitely care. Okay, all right. No, no. You know, I'd rather see you as John Stewart than Kevin Hart. <laughs> um, they also are talking about the DCU and how different it's going to be from the DCEU. Uh, in this universe, heroes have been around for ages. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it's affected the world's history and how it shaped the DCU. So, um, they say it's more in line with the approach of Star Wars versus Marvel, right? Because Star Wars, you're being dumped into a universe that, you know, all this, is, it's, it's not an origin for that universe. Right. In Marvel, like we talked about, you know, the first, the early movies, Iron Man, Captain America, really were the, the genesis of this MCU. Mm -hmm. There were no heroes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now they're kind of shoehorning some in, like with the Eternals and all the cosmic shit, but... In the DCU, they're saying you're going to be dropped in as if everyone knew about heroes for a long time. So from that standpoint, I'm excited. Okay. I Like, one of the issues with the DCEU for me is it just felt like DC's version of the MCU. It was okay. too similar. Right. And then they tried to rush the Batman, Superman, Justice League after, like, three movies, even though, you know, it took Marvel years. So I, I like, I like first of all, I like it having a different approach. Mm. Because it, it's nice when you can have DC as an alternative to Marvel, not as, like, a clone of Marvel. You know what right. I mean? Right. Um, all right. So, Josh Brolin is Hal Jordan. Moving on. The Defenders. So, The Defenders on Netflix. I've never seen the show. Mm -hmm. I've heard that the show's not that good. Mm -hmm. You've watched it, right? Um, I've, I remember clips of it. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't say I, I watched it. Got it. I, Gleaned it. Okay. So it wasn't memorable enough. No, not at all. Um, but there is some rumor because, you know, we talking about Daredevil recently with um, Daredevil Born Again, mm. working on that. I don't know exactly when that drops, but it's sometime soon. I mean, they've been shooting it over the past year. Um, hear a lot of good things about it. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the cool things about the Daredevil stories are how they all kind of connect, right? You have the Punisher, which he shows up in, was a season two, I think, of... Um, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, they all kind of cross paths. Right. Now, I've heard like I've I've heard about the Defender show and everyone said they kind of just dropped the ball on it, but mm -hmm. it is cool when you see these characters kind of cross and and they all have like a common threat with Wilson Fisk and and whatnot. Right. So the, the rumor is that they will be back. Um so in, in the coming years, Hawkeye, Ms. Marvel, Echo and Daredevil Born Again were just the beginning of a much bigger story that will be further explored once Secret Wars is out of the way. So it's, you know, a few years from now, because Secret mm -hmm. Wars is um, about, I think, two, year, two three years away. Um, so Marvel wants all three of these guys to come back. Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage. So okay. I'm a big fan of Luke Cage. I thought they yeah. did a great job there. He was, fe he's in it, like, you know, he was featured in Jessica Jones before he had his own show. Right. I mean, we talked about Kristen Ritter, Jessica Jones um, on Hit or Miss Cast. Yep. That was last week, which... We both agreed major hit. Yeah, I, I I've not seen the second season yet, but I thought the first season was amazing. Yeah, yeah. With that, good show. I forget the villain, um, the dude that uh, uh, mind controls everyone. Right, right. Dude, that was um, just sick. I, I yeah, it I was. mean, made the girl or Starlight from the boys kill her parents in the elevator. Right. Like, dude, just twisted shit. Yep. Um, so they, I've never seen Iron Fist. I think you told me that wasn't as good as the others. It wasn't. It wasn't that good. So it's it's almost like. They they did Iron Fist and with the same laziness they went they did the Defenders. Okay, so Got it. yeah, I it's just now Iron Fist good. I've never really liked as a character like the whole. I mean, he was a strong character in that Hell's Kitchen setting. Okay, right, but definitely not. Oh, I'm gonna go and buy uh, Iron Fist. You know, <laughs> yeah, I've not seen you with an Iron Fist shirt no, yet. No, no? Not at all. you don't have one. No, <laughs> no. Um, but the, Marvel wants all three back. I think that's a good thing. We'll see. We will see. Just, just give me a good story, dude. That's right. what I want. Just give me a good story. And I think with those characters, there's a lot to tell and mm -hmm. different than what we're used to because they're grounded, right? I mean, right. they're they're pretty much limited to Hell's Kitchen, the street mm -hmm. level stuff. Um, you know, we we we've seen a lot of that in Netflix. They move a lot slower. You know, Daredevil goes out, saves a couple guys, gets into a big fight. He's out of commission for a couple of days. He's all banged up. He's right. healing on someone's couch. Like it's, <laughs> it, you know, it's different than, you know, like we're talking about civil war later. Like, dude, they're fighting airport, blasting each other. Five minutes later, they're over here. Like right. all that happens in like a couple of days. No one's really hurt badly. Right. right. But daredevil hell's kitchen, bro. You get in one fight, you're out of commission for two weeks. Yep. Um, so I, I like, I prefer the grounded, you know, mm -hmm. over the, you know, I think they all have its place, but if I had to pick like, you know, one or the other, I'd go with the grounded stories. And, and and for me, the one character I would like 
to see and has been a part of all of those is Claire. The nurse? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Rosario, Rosario Daw- Daw- yeah, yeah. Daw- uh, Dawson? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she, um, I, yeah, I like her character. Yeah. And, yeah, she's, I think, the only one that has been in, like, every one of those shows. Pretty much, right? yeah. yeah. Um, she was in Jessica Jones' first season at the end. She was at the hospital mm-hmm. when they were at the hospital for, I forget exactly why, but. Um, Doomsday Secret Wars rumor, Adrian. So th- this rumor. Now, these are all rumors, so mm-hmm. we don't know if they're true or not. We, I mean, we kind of have a track record, though, of reporting rumors that actually come true. You right. know, I, I think if, if we were – if we were a major league baseball player, we'd be we'd have the batting title, okay? sure, because we're just you know we're that good. Well, whatever um, that means, yeah, I, I'm, I don't do baseball. <laughs> we'd have the so. most hits. We'd be the most accurate. Okay. Our, our predictions, gotcha. okay, English. We could Got be it. like a psychic, you know. <laughs> um, anyways, but the, the rumor about because you know Robert Downey Jr. announced his Doctor Doom at the um, San Diego Comic Con right. last month. Big news. We're big fans of it. We talked about it a lot here. Mm. Um, some of you out there are not, and what I would say is that you're wrong. That's all. Um, it's, it's okay. It's it's perfectly it's okay fine. To be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. We're wrong every once in a while. I remember that one time I was wrong. You know, yeah, yep. you were probably wrong at least maybe once. At least once. Yeah, but not much. I mean, nah. let's not get crazy. God, yeah, right. not as wrong as you guys are, but. <laughs> Um, but Robert Downey Jr. as Doom, Kane Dynasty has been revamped and will be released as Avengers Doomsday. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of questions, though, because we've not seen Doctor Doom yet. This is a mm-hmm. character that's going to be. So kind of like we're talking about not having origins. I don't know if we'll see much of an origin here, maybe, but mm-hmm. he's going to be Doom in two movies and potentially show up in a post credit scene for <laughs> Fantastic Four, which would make sense, right? Um, but the, the rumor is that... And the way they, the guy teased this rumor was he quoted a line from a um, New Avengers story. Mm-hmm. So the line he quoted was, if you really want to know why Latveria, is that how you say it? Latveria? Close La- enough. Latveria, the flowers die in the summer, then you'd already know where to look. So I, I must, maybe that's a doom quote, I would assume. But the, the why this was key was that quote came from a New Avengers story. Mm-hmm. And in this comic, we see Doom tasked with saving the multiverse from the Beyonders, mm-hmm. and he spends years killing Molecule Man's variants, but he's still unable to stop the final incursion from taking place. So this is leading up to um, Secret Wars. So the, the, they're, so based off this rumor, that's what the origin for this Doom will be in um, the MCU. Now, we've <clears throat> we've had incursions teased in the MCU. Mm-hmm. They, um, they talked about them in the Doctor Strange multiverse movie. Right. Right, and then at the end, the uh, I only know, uh, Clea, Cleo, I think her name is, but she shows up, sees Strange walking down the street, pulls him into a portal, movie ends. Mm-hmm. Right, so and it looks like there's some shit going on. So maybe these incursions are happening. Mm-hmm. We've also we've read Secret Wars, mm-hmm. so we're familiar with incursions from the comics where right. two universes collide and basically they both end up not existing. Mm-hmm. So, which then leads to Doom creating um, Battle World in the newer Secret Wars. We've assumed that we're going to get Battle World in the MCU because Secret Wars is happening. Doom's going to be the, the big baddie, as they call him, Adrian. <laughs> um, but th- if they were to go to this route, now you, we've talked about Molecule Man, and you even posed the question, how do they do Secret Wars without Molecule Man? Right. So if, if they're leaning off this story, we may see some story where he's killing off Molecule Man because Molecule Man is really the guy behind right. Battle World. Right. So no, I guess he's assuming no Molecule Man, no incursions, no Battle World. Uh, I don't get the correlation, but um, I, I the, what I do like about this is it's one of those stories where, from Doom's point of view, mm-hmm. he's not the villain, and I think those are the most intriguing villain stories. Doom is never the villain, right? To, to, to Doom, to Doom, yeah, right. But but you see that in in the movies a lot of times they screw it up, right? You got to make the bad guy the bad guy. But some of the best stories, even with Thanos, Thanos is like, dude, this right. I'm, I'm trying to save everybody. Fuck y'all talking about the high, the high evolutionary, yeah. was definitely the <laughs> yep. bad guy. Yep. <laughs> even Ultron, like Ultron's like, dude, the only way yeah. I'm, I, here's how we can have peace everywhere: kill everyone. Exactly. Like, dude, that's not that's, that's not peace. That's just <laughs> that's that's actually slaughter. You yeah. know. Um. So I I <sighs> I think this story would fit Tony Stark mm-hmm. or Tony Stark. Here I go. There you go. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Right. Sure. And and we're gonna talk about that with Civil War where he kind of walked that line of, you know, good, bad. Like, mm. you, he was framed as almost the villain in that story, at yeah. least in Cap's story, right? right. Um, so I think he's perfect for that, and if they're going this route, I'm all for it, dude. Right, right. It's, it's interesting, you know, after rewatching that, it's like, 
it was almost like the role should have been reversed. You know, the Boy mm. Scout should have been, you know, the 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 Tony Stark role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And Tony should have been the, you know, fuck the rebel. Yeah. yeah. But no. No. Nope. Interesting. It, yeah, it is. But um, but I think for me, it, it just validates the fact that Robert Downey Jr. can walk that line sure. really well on screen. Because mm-hmm. this movie comes after Age of Ultron and like Iron Man fan, awesome. Mm-hmm. And you see this, you're like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? But we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. Uh, it's a little preview. See, it's a little teaser. Uh, so yep. if you want more of that, guys, hit subscribe, like, and wait till later. Because we're going to do a deep dive into Captain America Civil War. There you go. Um, Andrew Garfield Hold is. Hold on. But before I get. Yeah. B- before I forget. You know there was a Martha moment in Civil War, right? Uh-oh. We'll get to it. Think oh, about it. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's a Martha moment. There's a Martha Uh-oh. moment. Oh, man. Now in, there's a Martha moment in Civil War. All right. Well, stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right. Um, Andrew Garfield's in the news again. Hey, <laughs> our boy, Andrew. So <laughs> Spider-Man 4 is in the works. This is a movie that uh, we've heard a lot of things. We've heard that sure. the um, street-level Civil War type of Daredevil Kingpin will, will start here or be a part of it. Then we've heard that, you know, Sony, because this is a Sony-MCU kind of joint venture, right? Mm-hmm. Sony wants it to be multiverse because No Way Home was good, so they figured just double down on that. Why not, sure, right? Why not? Right? Yeah, you just want more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing that we heard recently is that this movie will come out in between mm-hmm. Doomsday, Avengers Doomsday, and Avengers Secret Wars. And okay. the rumor about that is that any movie in that time period there mm-hmm. will be like that in that time period will take place in Battle World. Sure. So we could have a Spider Man movie in Battle World. Now, mm-hmm. in the original Secret Wars, that's where Spider Man gets the symbiote and right. the Black Spider Man. So, and we've also heard that rumor that that's going to happen in this movie. So mm-hmm. basically, what it sounds like is who the hell knows? Okay. Right. Exactly. But the reason, which is. Which is- the way I like it. Yeah. I don't want to know everything about it. It's like, Correct. I don't want to feel like I saw the movie in the commercials, mm-hmm. you know, save the movie for the movie, save the mystery of the, of right. all the stuff that's happening for the actual movie. Now, what about this? Like we, we talk about a lot of rumors, all of them don't come true, but a lot of times of the rumors we talk about, there's usually one that does. So like mm-hmm. Deadpool Wolverine, we saw a rumor that um, Wolverine was going to just cut Sabretooth's head off. We also saw a rumor that they were going to have a fight, right? Mm. So it was the the first one. And now when I saw that scene, I was like, oh, I remember that rumor. Does it bother you that you saw it in a rumor or does it not? No, not no. at all. You don't feel it as like a spoiler? No, no, not at all. No, me neither. Um, so anyways. I mean, and, and actually both rumors were true. Yeah. They d- did have a fight. Correct. As short as it was. Yes. Because he, he got his head cut off immediately. So. Yep. <laughs> um, so there's a rumor about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire showing up in Spider-Man 4. I guess if Sony has their way, they would because they want another multiverse party. Wow. Um, now, they add, now one thing you should know about Andrew Garfield, do not ask him if he's going to show up in the movie because he's going to deny it. Right. <laughs> he denied it for No Way Home right. up until the movie even came out. So somebody asked him, and <laughs> this is what he said. I mean, like, the internet is a big place. I think there's a lot of people who will just say anything to get clicks. So you might have been duped, I'm afraid. <laughs> so he's denying it again, but went through all that. So I just thought it was funny that someone actually thought, like, you know, let's ask him again. Um, wow. Now, the reason I bring this up, though, if, if you, you had your choice, mm-hmm. Spider-Man 4, would you choose the um, another multiverse trip? Would you choose the street-level Civil War? Or would you choose the um, battle world experience? Ooh. Yeah, put you on the spot. I would, I would do the battle world thing. Yeah, because that'd be cool to get that black symbiote suit. But it really that, would, because because that would be his suits have been so techy mm-hmm. because of Stark um, that it'd be like a nice reprieve. Yeah, uh, to see that 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 black suit, and that would that that would then kick off a whole different thing. Right, you know, maybe that would introduce um, real venom, uh, venom into you know the MCU as yeah. opposed to being some separate Sony shit. Right, right. yeah, <clears throat> I'm, I'm torn because I I love I would love to see the Kingpin Spider Man right. Street level, but 
if Battle World leads to Black Spider Man suit, right? I think I got to lean that yeah. way too. Dude. Yeah, I was I was thinking about the street level thing yeah. too. I I'm not you know the multiverse they kind of played that dude. Are we ever going to get back to like normal shit? Yeah, right. It's like, like so, I'm I'm kind of done with the multiverse thing. Like, can someone stop someone from robbing a bank or something? You know, <laughs> right. like come on. Right, right. But uh, no, definitely Battle World, the Black Symbiote suit. Yeah. Um, and and I think it'll it'll play nicely into all the other stuff that's going on. You know, yeah, yeah. The Doom and everything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So yeah, let's hope that that happens. Um, Joker two. So this movie comes out. I don't even know when it comes out, but our boys at Rotten Tomatoes have already rated this movie. Uh-huh. The critics have given it a fifty nine percent based off of forty two reviews. Now we we if you've watched us before, you know how we feel about Rotten Tomatoes. Um, we think it's bullshit. You know, there's that it's they're really just they're on our show for comic relief. Actually, they're like, you know, we just have fun. We make fun of their scores. We'll have a, a segment later where we talk about some of their scores and how fucking stupid they are. But um, now I will say this, though, their scores are sometimes a, a, a good guy. Like, you know, the hot and cold game, right? Yeah. Like they're good to get you kind of warm. They're mm-hmm. not going to be on point, but rarely is a movie you know, a 32 on Rotten Tomatoes, and, you know, we'd give it a 10. That, that's not going right, to happen. Right. It may be a 32 there, and we go, it wasn't that bad. It was maybe like a 5 or 6, you yeah. know. But um, 59% for this movie. This is a movie that I have not met anyone that's excited about this. Um, You're not. I, I can understand it. I'm definitely not. <laughs> Didn't see the first one. Probably right. won't see. Most likely won't see this one. I'll, I'll probably check it out because I saw the first one. But mm-hmm. the first one falls in that same bucket that we were talking about earlier. When I was done with that movie, I didn't want to see a, a, a sequel. Right. I was like, okay. It, was a, it wasn't a fun movie. It was a depressing movie. Mm-hmm. It, was an, it was a decent story. Sure. Jo- Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. It was cool to see his portrayal of Joker. It wasn't my favorite. Right. But the movie was complete. It was complete. It was right. it. Yep. It felt like it really leaned mm-hmm. on Taxi Driver. Mm-hmm. I've not seen, um, what's the other one? It was based on The King of Comedy. It's another Scorsese film. Mm-hmm. I've not seen that movie, but it also says it pulls a lot from there. So I thought it was cool how it kind of felt like it paid homage to that movie a little bit. And that was it. I didn't even see another Wait one. Wait a minute. There's a movie called The King of Comedy? Yeah. Yep, it's not a, the kings. Of no, comedy. not no. That I've seen that oh, okay. like dozens of times. By the way, <laughs> Bernie Mac, rest right. in peace, Bernie Mac. I love You're me some Bernie man. Mac, dude. He just killed it too. Oh, he did. That he was. It's almost like you could have just had him. Exactly. I mean, Cedric was funny too, but mm-hmm. Steve Harvey is like, dude, just go do Family Feud. <laughs> you know, come on, that was way. Which out he there. is funny. He, as Steve hell Harvey is actually that. hilarious. Uh, at, at Family Feud. I oh mean, my god, dude, ridiculous. He's the best Family Feud host, absolutely in history. Absolutely. Yep. Dude, the way he looks at them when they say stupid shit, he's just like, <laughs> did you really say that? Like, Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, anyways, so the Joker was based <laughs> off of those two movies. So, I mean, I'm not mad I watched it. I'm, I actually, like a couple years ago, I tried watching it again. Mm-hmm. And after like the first 15 minutes, I'm like, I don't want to see this again. It's not, what, it's the a movie. Joker, the first yeah, one? Yeah, the Joker, no. the first one. So, um, I mean, I'll probably check it out. I'm not really excited, but I think this falls under <clears> that bucket of like why did we have a sequel we don't need it sometimes just do one and done i mean i i I didn't see the movie but it sounds like a pbs documentary on um (laughs) you know uh why why we don't have mental hospitals or something why is everybody going to prison (laughs) instead of mental hospitals i i Anyway, yeah, it it, do, it does feel like a um a, a mental health um promo, you know, an ad or something. But, um, anyways, so all right, we like to wrap up the news and rumors with what we call thumbs up or down here on Only Comics. So I'm gonna um recap, and we'll just let us know. We'll let you know how we feel about it today. Mm-hmm. As Adrian, you point out very often, we may change. We may change something we thumbs down right now in. Three weeks we may come on and say it was the best idea ever. You never know. Well, I'm not going to say that about <laughs> Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not that one, you know. But the only way you're going to find out uh, is if you stay tuned, if you uh, subscribe. You so, all right. Number one, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice looks to knock Deadpool Wolverine out of the top spot this week with over $100 million at the domestic box office. I'm giving this a thumbs down. Nope, I saw the movie. It was mid at best, not needed. Deadpool Wolverine over Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. So what's the actual <laughs> thumbs up and thumb down about? The fact that they knocked yes, him out? Yes, yes. I'm thumbs oh, down that so, down. So, so you're not a fan of the fact that Beetlejuice knocked him out? Yes. Or they knocked him out because it wasn't, it didn't meet your expectations? Both. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, 
I probably won't see the movie. I'll probably watch it if it comes out on streaming. Yep. I'm definitely not going to go to the movies because I anticipated it being worse than the first right. one, right? Um, so my not caring about this particular news, I'm going to go thumbs down. Okay. Fantastic Four, First Steps, rumored to not be an origin and featured an established team of heroes. I'm giving that a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Josh Brolin casted as Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, to play an older, gruff, no-nonsense mentor to a younger and reckless Jon Stewart. I guess a thumbs up, dude. I'm intrigued. Sure, sure. Is is he going to be like, um, what's the what's the wildebeest um, Green Lantern, Warthog, or whatever? Oh, is. yeah. Uh, that, is he going to be like like him kind of a deal? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, either way, I mean, I, sure, thumbs up. Yeah. Even though he breaks the, the cardinal, you know, two two character he rule. Does. But, hey. Wait, now, if he does a good job, will you forgive him for breaking the rule? Um, well, <laughs> no. No? No. Okay. Yeah. No. The, the, the rules, rules are rules. Rules are rules, right? <laughs> Separate church and state, baby. Right. I don't know. There's the old saying, rules are meant to be broken, you know? I, so, uh, <laughs> the Defenders rumored to return to the MCU. Give that a thumbs up. Some street level heroes. Thumbs up. Doctor Doom rumored to be trying to save the multiverse by killing off Molecule Man variants to stop incursions in the MCU. Give that a thumbs up. It's very King ish. Yes, right. It is. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Thumbs up. Okay. Andrew Garfield says he's not in Spider-Man 4. Oh I give this a thumbs down. Why are you asking Andrew Garfield that? You know he ain't going to answer you. Well, who gives a shit about Andrew Garfield anyway? <laughs> I do, Adrian. I like Spider-Man. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. <laughs> Joker 2 is <laughs> currently sitting at 59% on Rotten Tomatoes off of 49 um, reviews. I give this a thumbs down. No one wanted this movie. Thumbs down. I, I shouldn't say no. I'm sure some of y'all are there. like, I can't wait to see Joker 2. It's going to be so good. <laughs> How about it, dude? Um, that's not me. Anyways, that's it for thumbs up, thumbs down. Let us know if you agree with us. If you don't, I promise you, this is a promise. We will not get upset if you don't agree with us. We won't. Nope. And I can also promise you this. Some of our stances will change. <laughs> <laughs> Fact check. Yep. Everything that comes out of our mouths. That too, yeah. <laughs> this is probably, you don't even know if this is really news. I could have right? just made all this exactly. shit up. Like, exactly. like Josh Brolin? No, he's not playing um, Hal Jordan. You know, Al Pacino is. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> but that would probably be a miscast. What do you, oh, what do you my say? God. That's definitely a miscast, <laughs> and I can't get that image out of my mind. Out there. <laughs> Al Pacino playing Al Jordan. <laughs> dude, uh, um, you know, some, I, I forget who Al Pacino could play Green Lantern's logo. <laughs> 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 that so short, man. Um, I forget who said this. It was someone on our, our TikTok a few weeks ago. We were talking about casting. I mean, it was YouTube. Um, they said, what about Brian Cranston, the guy who plays Walter White, and um, as Professor Xavier? That's interesting. I could see that, I right? I like that, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he could pull it off. I mean, Cranston's a tall dude, though. Is he? To, I think so. Had to be like a fucking like stretch limo. Well, Xavier's not as tall because, you know, he's so, usually uh, seated. Exactly, but... No, I think that's it. Yeah, I think he can pull it off. Yeah. I mean, we, he's got the bald look down. We know that right, already. Right. You know, <laughs> He's got the wheelchair thing down. He played in that movie. Um, yeah. You know, with uh, actually, who was it? Um, I just talked about him. Um, Kevin Hart. Okay. With uh, Cranston and Kevin Hart. I didn't see it. It was a pretty good movie. He yeah. gave, uh, He was this rich guy, recluse in New York. Yeah. And he needed somebody to... <laughs> help him get around or do some stuff. And Kevin Hart was that guy, you mm. know, kind of giving him a chance. And then Kevin Hart came, uh, character came up with this, um, like souped up wheelchair kind of a deal. And then even <laughs> after he left him or he died or whatever, he, Kevin Hart went on, Kevin Hart's character went on and ma started his company selling these, these super souped up motorized wheelchairs and shit. Oh, no it was sure. pretty, it was pretty cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so he can, he can definitely pull off a wheelchair. Yep. And he can be bald, and he can be kind of a dick. Well, you know. Which you got to be to be, like, Xavier. And I, I like when they show, like, the real Xavier. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like the Fox universe is a little too too nice to Xavier. Right. Like, Xavier is kind of an asshole. Right, right. <clears throat> and also, I mean, if you can stand up in a desert in a diaper or, or some, <laughs> some whitey, tidy whiteys, yeah. you, you, can you, you can definitely do the short cock. Yes, he's got He said, I have no issue with that. So, yeah, dude, you know what? Cast him. So whoever said that, I'm sorry, I forget right? your name, but um, I agree. Yeah, I like that. Now, that leads to, look at this segue, Adrian. You know what that leads us to? Mm. Hit or miss cast. There you go. 
It's like I've been doing this my whole life, you know? <laughs> you were born to do I this. I was. Yep. One of these days, we're going to be on late night TV, Adrian. We're going to have a late night comic show. So, mm. um, anyway, the Tonight Show with Mike <laughs> one, and Adrian. One show. <laughs> one show. <laughs> I thought it was going to be good. One show, dude. Damn. All right. Um, well, hit or miss cast. You ready? Let's do it. This is where I give out a casting choice from the past. So, you know, some people give out, like, we've, we've had people ask, what do you think about Harrison Ford as Thaddeus Ross? Well, hasn't, we haven't seen it yet. Right. So we're only rating casting that we've already seen on screen. Okay. Right? So, number one, and, and the theme here, Adrian, is um, a little bit of uh, Civil War. So you'll notice everyone I mentioned here today mm -hmm. was in the movie Captain America Civil War. Okay. Number one. Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa slash Black Panther. <laughs> Crushed it. Crushed it, dude. Amazing. With that being said, they should recast T'Challa. Absolutely. Well, they should have. It's too late now. You already killed him off. Right. Um, Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes. Killed it. Dude, amazing. Yep. Like that, and we'll get into this later, but one of my f highlights of this movie is the portrayal of Winter Soldier slash Bucky, right. that whole story. William Hurt as Thaddeus Ross. <laughs> Killed it. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was great. Yeah. Um, Daniel Bruhl as Baron Zemo. Mm, that one I'm kind of on a, yeah. on the fence about. Um, he's like a Charlie Coxy kind of He does kind of look like it, yeah. You know, so even though Charlie Cox does a good job as Daredevil, I could also see somebody else doing Daredevil, right? Okay. But so Baron Zemo, I, I would say miscast on yeah. that one. And it was a very different portrayal from the comics. That very Zemo. different. Like, very different. I, I think the one thing, I, I wish that they would have at least dressed him similar to the comic. Because everyone else Something. is in their, you know, comics. I mean, Captain America's there with his bright fucking red, white, and blue. Why can't he have a costume, you know? Um, and last but not least, John Slattery as Howard Stark. Now, there's was two actors that played Howard Stark. This is the one with the white hair. Yep. yep, yep, yep. You know, John Slattery. Yeah. No, I... Good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I like him over the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he did a great job, dude. He's also, and you ever seen Mad Men? No. He's in that, and he does a, a really good job. I forget his, the character's name, but it was, a, it was, oh no, you had one miss. So the one miss was Baron Zemo, Correct. Daniel Brule. <clears throat> you were hits across the board mm -hmm. outside of that. So, um, yeah, dude, um, Sebastian Stan, and we'll talk about this more later, but I, he owned that role of Bucky Barnes. Like, yeah. And he was so good at, like, changing his demeanor depending on whether he was mind control or not. Like, it was like a switch, you know. Right. Or even in the, the the second Captain America, the Winter Soldier movie, where he wears the mask the whole time, do you just see the, the presence in the right. eyes, dude? That is that is the that is my standard for a good character, mm. right? If you don't even know who that person is visually, right. you know who that person is. Oh, yeah. Right? So that was uh, definitely, definitely. Yep. Like he looked like a killer just from right. here up, you know? I mean, except for really, dude, in that movie, except for the Baron Zemo character, I think everybody just yeah. pretty much nailed it. Dude. Yep, absolutely. Um, all right, next up, a little segment that we call, well, some of us call this Critics First Audience. Some of us call this, what the fuck, Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> But I put I put a little spin on it this week, Adrian, right. because I um I have a theme here this week, and it's all it's the three Captain America movies mm -hmm. and the two Avengers movies, the first two. Now all these scores are pretty even, so we're not gonna go critics versus audience. What we're gonna do is we're gonna determine if Rotten Tomatoes got the order of these movies right, which okay. one's better than the other one. Okay, so. I'll go. I'll, I'll read their scores real quick. The first Captain America movie, the first Avenger, mm -hmm. critics gave it an eighty, audience gave it a seventy-five. Okay, um, I will tell you that that is one of the lowest-rated movies on this list. The Winter Soldier, second Cap movie, critics gave it a ninety, audience gave it a ninety-two. Civil War, critics gave it a ninety, audience gave it an eighty-nine. Avengers, the first Avengers, critics gave it a ninety-one. Audience gave it a 91, dead even. And then Age of Ultron, we talked about last week. Critics gave it a 76. Audience gave it an 82. So all within a few points. Mm -hmm. But according to the critics, the best movie out of all five of these is the first Avengers. According to the audience, the best movie out of all of these is The Winter Soldier. I would say the best movie out of all of these is Civil War. Mm -hmm. What would you say? I I mean, what are we 
entertainment value, um, story. Uh, you know, I mean, the, I don't know, dude. The, your, guess, your favorite, then. My favorite? Yeah. The Three Caps and the Two Avengers. Yep. Um, dude. I would probably go with Civil War. Okay. Yeah. So we agree on that. Yeah. Um, I would go number two of all of these, Winter Soldier. Would you put that above the first two Avengers movies? That's a tough one. It 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 is because you you're looking at different things, right? Um, and I'm always into the first, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the ones that come out, um, like even the first Captain America. To me, I don't know why I got such a low score, but yeah, I mean that that set up a lot. It did. Um, yeah. Would you put that above Winter Soldier? I'd put Winter Soldier over the first Cap movie. Um, I wouldn't put it over Winter Soldier. Okay. Because the Winter Soldier is like the evolution of, yeah. uh, it's like it's almost like the point of you know uh, introducing Captain America, right? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I mean, I wouldn't give it that such a low score. The, the first Cap. Oh yeah, like, the audience gave it a seventy five. Right, right. Yeah, no. So, um, second one, uh, better than the Avengers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Um. So on my list, I got Civil War, Winter Soldier, and then at number three, I put First Avengers. Okay, I can see Is that. that. That's better than Age of Ultron. Yeah. By uh, it, it's hard. They're both really good, but I, I still <laughs> say I think as a whole, the First Avengers is better than Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. And then both of those movies, I have Cap one last on my list. Mm -hmm. Age of Ultron and Avengers 1 is better than Captain America 1 to me. Yeah. You agree with that? I can see that. Yep. Okay. Now, Age of Ultron was more about the birth of Vision than it was about Ultron. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, because so much more came out of that. Mm. You know, Ultron just went away. Well, apparently not. Yeah. Right? Not, yeah. But <clears throat> it set up Vision. Um you know the Wanda Wanda Vision show, right? <clears throat> things like that. Him being in all these crossovers and things like that. So, I, to me, it was more about the, his birth than it was about yeah. Ultron. Like that had a, a bigger impact on sure. the MCU. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, now, the thing about these five, <clears throat> dude, these are probably five of the best movies in the MCU. So it's like we're literally splitting hairs here, right? Yeah. It's like one A, one B almost. Um, <clears throat> But I, I the the cool thing about the Captain America trilogy is I do you mentioned the second one felt like an evolution. I feel like that's how the whole trilogy feels. Like mm -hmm. you start one, it's it's hard to call that movie small because it's you know it takes place over lots of years through the wars and all mm -hmm. that shit. You you there's a lot crammed into that whatever it is couple hours. But then the Winter Soldier feels like <clears throat> you know we now have Cap in our timeline. He's adjusted somewhat, mm -hmm. and now he's uncovering all this. Um, like basically all these lies and conspiracies hydra still exist and mm -hmm. shield is actually not as good as that you know everyone thinks they are mm -hmm. and um and then on civil war it's just due to a whole nother level they get better and better for me civil war almost felt avenger it did -esque. Yeah. it's like why is this even captain america civil war i know you know but i mean great movie it it's is just, yeah yeah, that it, that's one of um, – we'll talk about it um, later with ups and downs, but that was one where I'm like, yeah, it, as much as I – it's probably one of my favorite movies in the MCU, but at times it does feel like an Avenger movie. It's, right. It kind of felt like at times Cap was riding in the backseat. Yeah. And it's like, well, ain't this your movie? What the fuck you doing? Mm. But it was still a great movie, so sure, it's hard, sure, you know? Sure. wasn't as bad as the, the Echo thing. No, but, God, no. Because uh, she definitely took the backseat right. in that. The one thing I'll say about the Captain America movies mm -hmm. is they made me like Captain America more as a character sure. with each one, too. Yep. Like, the Avengers movies painted him as, like, cringe. Mm. In the, the first one, he's at odds with Tony. He's just too much. He's like the guy that, you know, reminds the teacher that they forgot to give out homework. Right. That's how they made him feel. <laughs> but in his movies, not. Like, he, you know, he just stands up for what he believes is right. Mm. He cannot look the other way, which is, I like that about his, like, I love that identity. Right. You know? Got it. 
Um, so there you have it. What the fuck, Rotten Tomatoes? So you guys got your shit wrong. <laughs> Our list is right. Ours goes um, number one, Civil War. Number two, Winter Soldier. Number three, Avengers. Number four, Age of Ultron. And number five, Captain America, the first Avenger. There you go. All great movies. Um, that's our order. Drop your order. Let us know if you agree with us or not. And don't get upset and go, that's not my movie's not as good as that. Just just have your own opinion and everyone can be happy. Right. That's a that's a, a lazy weekend movie watch list right there. That is, yeah. yeah. Yep, that is a good watch. Well, we, we just knocked out mm. two of them. We did Civil mm. War this week yep. and Age of Ultron last week. Um, yeah, so who knows? Maybe down the road we'll, we'll pop some of those in. Our next rainy weekend. There you go. But, yeah, it would be a, a fun. And they all connect somewhat but you don't need to watch everything in between you know um all right next up adrian we respond got a handful of comments here from some of our friends some of our not so friendly friends some of our really friendly but the good thing about this is it's all in good fun it's all in good fun speaking of our friends our boy sons of Sekmat is back okay okay he says great episode he's talking about last week's episode i thought it was a great episode did you feel that way absolutely um, he says, love you guys. We love you too, sons of Sekmat. He has a request for you. He says, mm. can Adrian do a hidden gem on Typhoid Mary? I absolutely can. Yeah. Do. Special um, request. Yeah. Look at that. Typhoid. That, that's... That's, That's intriguing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I don't like know that. a lot about her, so this will be a, this will be a, a day under Adrian's learning tree. There we go. So there, there you go. have it. Well, hey, you ask and we deliver, there right? Son of Sekmat also, I was talking about Marvel Rivals a couple weeks ago, and he, um, he, he, he threw this in the chat. Space Marine 2 is better than Marvel Rivals. Now, Space Marine 2 is a game that just dropped. It actually drops today the full game and there was early access a few days ago dude my mm-hmm. son was bragging about this game all mm-hmm. weekend to the point where he sold me adrian i just bought it like really? yep he was playing it he dude he stayed up all night waited for it to drop he already beat the campaign in like you know four hours he's like dude you gotta get it it's awesome my oldest son who like he, he goes through games like nothing mm-hmm. so i'm like yeah 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 sure i'll get to it dude, he was relentless so finally i caved he sold me dude mm-hmm. I bought it, and <clears throat> it actually is a lot of fun. Okay. It's a lot of fun. You play as like this, um, it, you're like some type of space, you're a space marine, you're mm-hmm. some kind of human clone, but you're a lot bigger than humans, and you're in this giant, almost like war um, or iron monger type suit. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're walking around space, and there's hordes of enemies. So however they did this, I mean, it's, it's on the newer systems, but they really utilize the new hardware there's hundreds of enemies on screen at one time. Mm-hmm. Literally hundreds, dude. Swarms of these little creatures. It's like some shit you'd see in a movie, like zombie apocalypse mm-hmm. level. Sounds ratchet and clankish. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, similar to the newer one. like just the, saying. But, um, yeah, it is third person, but it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's brutal. Um, what, is, it, what is it called? It is called Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. Okay. So it's part of this whole Warhammer lore. Like, they've had games and stuff around for decades. But uh, So Sons of Sekmat, when you commented this, I had no idea what you were talking about, but my son sold me on it, so I played it. I love it. So if any of y'all out there playing that, let me know. Um, All right, here we go. We got the CPTN Canada. Oh, the Captain Canada. Captain Canada chimed in. Look at that. He says, another banger episode, fellas. Yeah, we know. We agree. (laughs) We appreciate it. Age of Ultron is very underrated. Wished we could have seen more of Ultron because he was a big threat. Glad we got to see him in What If as Infinity Ultron that easily defeated Thanos. Looking forward to Vision series with Ultron coming back. The reason I brought this up is um, Captain Canada and uh, Yancey Vasquez here says, Hey, guys, watch season one of What If. There's an episode, What If Ultron won, and you can see how powerful Ultron would have been if he got uploaded to Vision's body and he one shot Thanos. So what if is a show that I, I like some episodes, right? You have you seen the first season? Yes. You've seen these episodes with the vision. I saw it a while ago. I don't remember it. Uh, Okay. What if is like, um, it's like a HBO, I think death and robots. Okay. You got like different people making different episodes. Yeah. Um, in the series. So they are going to be different. Right. So, yeah. So some of them just like, I'm not interested in seeing, but I did watch these two, episodes over the weekend Mm -hmm. um and the what if because i I saw them before but dude i was barely like you said i was kind of just like barely watching dude i was chiming in and out um but you you do see ultron 
he actually gets the stones, mm-hmm. right? So we see him upload a division's body, and he's crazy powerful, and he ends up getting the infinity stones and just puts them into his own body, and then he has he the ultimate or whatever they call it, Infinity Ultron was like Vision wearing an Ultron suit with the infinity stones in the suit. Okay. Dude, Thanos shows up, goes through the portal just like he does in Infinity War. Fucking Ultron looks at him up and down. Zoop. And just cuts him right in half, dude. Like a fucking piece of bread. Wow. Yeah. So to his point, Captain Canada, yeah, he just literally easily defeats Thanos. Um and, and it's pretty cool. And then and then the the uh, watcher gets involved and he recruits all of these alternate versions of characters that you've seen throughout the what if episodes, like Captain Carter, right. um, T'Challa as Star Lord. Kill one that was cool was Killmonger as Black Panther, mm-hmm. which you could have. I'd have been okay, dude, if they threw Michael B. Jordan in his T'Challa. You don't even have to explain it to me. Exactly. I don't even give a fuck. Right. Just let him play it. And 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 well, I mean, other than he killed him off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, he killed him off. Too. I don't even care, dude. Just bring right. him back. Yeah, don't yeah, even yeah. tell me why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would. I would have. I would have did. That. Right. Um. But th- this was cool. So you know, you got. It's like. Ask and you shall receive. You know, Sons of the Second Man asked for a specific hidden gem. You guys said watch these. I checked them out. I like them. I thought it was cool. Sure. Uh, I think I am gonna could give um, what if another shot. Watch yeah. them because the the animation looks cool. Yeah. And some of the actors are voiced by their MCU um, or some of the characters are voiced by the MCU actors. Mm-hmm. And it it's just it's a fun show. Um, so I, I'll probably give it another shot. I mean, I watched Cape Crusader, so shit. <laughs> Um, Cyrell Catel. I don't know if that's how you say it. Cyril, Cyril, 1562 says, hi, sirs, avid fan here, sub here. Can I get a shout out for my upcoming baby? Names, babies, uh, names, baby Kai. Thanks and love lots. Great show. You know what? You can get a shout out, man. Baby Kai. Good luck with baby Kai. Yeah. Good luck. Man. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of work. It is dude. More, yeah. So more work than reading comments. I can tell you Absolutely. That. Give up the next 18 years of your life. We'll see you in 18 years, Cyril. Uh, 18. People say that it never no, stops. No, it doesn't. It no. never stops. Nope. So, but you know, 18 is not a magic number. No. So, Hey, if this is your first congrats. If it's congrats. not, you know what you're in store for. Um, all right. Lucifer Columbus. Wow. That's fitting. Wow. That's pretty fitting. <laughs> I mean, Lucifer sounds like someone who would show up to a, an island or a, a country and say, I discovered this and give I'm everyone sure. smallpox blankets, right? <laughs> it sounds like something exactly. Lucifer-ish. Uh, sure. Probably up his alley, you know? Sure. Maybe he was just, maybe Christopher Columbus was his was his day's Thanos. He's like, this is overpopulated. I can't really snap. Mm-hmm. But let me just hand out these smallpox blankets and get rid of half the population. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Anyways, um, but Lucifer Columbus, what he says is Jim Carrey's Riddler was top tier. Do you agree or disagree with that? Um, Jim Carrey's Riddler, for some reason I, I was thinking – Thinking of him as Joker, but no, I think it was. No, nah, I think it was good. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because Riddler is kind of over the top. Yeah, and pretty much every character that Jim Carrey did in those days were right. over the top. Now he's what recluse or something. I don't know. No, he shows up. He only comes out for Sonic movies. Oh, I saw a TikTok is? the other day. Like, yo, Jim Carrey hates Hollywood. Like, he's so anti Hollywood. Really? Yes, and he's like, but. When there's a Sonic movie, that motherfucker will come right out of hiding and shoot that shit. Yeah, he plays um, Dr. Robotnik. He actually does a really good job. Yeah. But, yeah, he's also over the top. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I like – now, that movie, that was um, Batman Forever, which is a – it's a shit, half a shit show. It's half okay. Right. It's a joke. I, You know, some I read this comment on, online, too, when we were talking about the, um, the past Batman movies. Mm. And they said if you look at those movies – through the same lens that you watch, like the Adam West movies, mm-hmm. you might like you. You'll be a little more tolerable of them. No, um, no, you don't think so. No, I I think the tone is probably closer to those, like goofiness. But I I would say that of that movie, one of the highlights for me was Jim Carrey's Riddler. Sure, I do think that he did a good job. It was a little. It was definitely more over the top than Riddler mm-hmm. is, but Riddler is over the top, so mm-hmm. it's just like an exaggeration. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, now, nah, you know, at Lucifer Columbus, I would agree it was top tier. Sure. Absolutely. Um, Snow Wolf Cosplay says, Snow Wolf Cosplay. <laughs> you guys tell us how you got these names. You right. know, it's, it's a lot of curiosity here. I'm intrigued, as they say. Mm. Pattinson. Well, first of all, 
It's Battinson, dude. Come on. Have you, have you not watched the show before? Battinson, I'll rephrase it. Battinson is currently my favorite Batman. I see what they were going for with his Bruce Wayne, but I think Christian Bale was a better Bruce so far. I can kind of agree with this. Now, you know, I, I Battinson's my favorite Batman. Mm -hmm. You're still Christian Bale, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I do like Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne a lot. Sure. I like his Bruce Wayne. Well, actually, would you agree with, you know what? We'll save this for later. Look okay. at that. We'll save. If you want to find out if Adrian agrees with what I was going to say, you don't know what I was going to say, but just tune in later. So, um, well, they probably don't give a shit what Adrian <laughs> thinks or says. However, I think yes, we'll save it for later. Yeah, I think they do, man. Son of Sekmat <laughs> says otherwise. He cares what you say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, Battinson's Bruce Wayne, I understood it. I got it. I sure. I don't think in year two you're supposed to be this playboy, you know, right. fun guy. Like, you know, you, you think about the difference between Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. Tony Stark was that guy before he became Iron Man. Right. Bruce Wayne was not. Right. Bruce Wayne was a recluse. Bruce Wayne was traveling around the world learning martial arts and, Correct. you know, ev every form of martial arts that exists to man and mm -hmm. becoming the baddest motherfucker in Gotham. Right, right. He had to figure out later that he needed to float in the public eye. Yeah. So he created Bruce Wayne. Right. Pretty much. He, he's, he's Batman in his mind. Correct. So he had to create Bruce Wayne. Right. So, like, and that's not going to come until later. No. Tony Stark is Tony Stark. Right. He, like, he ain't, Iron Man is just a suit he wears. Exactly. He's Tony Stark the whole time. Yep. When he's in the suit, when he's not, like that's, Batman is Batman and Bruce Wayne is a facade. Bruce Wayne exactly. is cosplay. Yep. He's dressing up as this. He has no interest in this shit. Right. He, the only reason he wants the money is so he can keep making his freaking bat toys and exactly. shit. Exactly. He ain't about like living the high life. He he wants to just go out, beat the shit out of criminals, <laughs> and then sleep all day. Alfred's the one like, bro, you got to go to this meeting. Come on, let's right. go. The vets like they're coming to the fucking house, bro. What the hell's your problem? Like, right. um. So anyway, him and um, Alfred and Lucius. Yeah. Keep keeping him on track. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Like Lucius. Yeah. He's he's the one running the company. You know. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I, I do, but yes, Christian Bale's Bruce, I really liked, I thought mm -hmm. he just nailed it. Like he, sure. Christian Bale did a great job of playing that. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a playboy, but I'm really not like mm -hmm. it just, it came across well. Sure. Um, A L X S L G R Axel Slugger, maybe, I don't know. He says rogue one at least deserves a conversation. So a while back we talked about on agree to disagree Star Wars movies. Okay. We were talking about trilogies, remember? No, we, we, we did a segment. It was called Third Time's a Charm. Mm -hmm. It's all coming back to me now. I'm like Xavier. It's fucking the ball. See, you just do this. comes right back. <laughs> so um, anyways, uh, we talked about trilogies and was the third movie the best of the trilogy, okay. right? I asked you Return of the Jedi from the original Star Wars movies. I think you said it was the best. I don't remember. Maybe. <laughs> you may change your mind. But sure. That, but the reason why that's important is it, it led to some Star Wars conversations in the comments. Okay. I would say Empire Strikes Back is my favorite of the first trilogy. Mm. Um, but one of my, it may be my, say, it may actually be my favorite Star Wars movie is Rogue One. You ever seen this movie? No. It is amazing. It um, It's the story of how... The Death Star plans were stolen prior to the first Star Wars movie. Because, okay. you know, they already have the plans of the Death Star. Right. Um, so this story is about how they steal them. And okay. it's uh, basically a suicide mission. Um, and it's it's kind of offshoot of the main Star Wars story. So you see um, these rebels, kind of ragtag group that really wants no part in what they're doing. But um, it... It feels very outlawish, kind of bounty hunter type of um, story, and it was it's a lot of fun. You see a badass scene with Darth Vader at the end where he's mm -hmm. just cutting through people with his lightsabers. Mm -hmm. Just, um, but it, it all I I do so. Um, you've not seen this, but Axel Slugger, I to me this is top tier Star Wars movie, probably top three. You know, um, I, I I actually don't think I've seen a Star Wars movie in the last 10 years. Oh, dude. damn. So, I mean, all this stuff is vague. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and I, I don't really, not being a real Star Wars fan, it's mm -hmm. not something that I'm going to like, oh, let me go and rewatch. Got just, it. No, and, and besides, there's like a million of there them. There is. You know? Actually, that's not true. I watched, <laughs> um, what's the one, Until It Got Silly, where, where the guy that's going to play Reed Richards, 
Oh, he, Mandalorian. Uh, Mandalorian. I, I, so it was I, good. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started watching that one. Star Wars is so like up in it because they have some shit that's really good, and then the stuff that's bad, dude, is like. <sighs> It's like they're I mean, tra- it's like comics too, right? Yeah. I mean, you got some real bad stuff, and you got some really great stuff, right. and you got some stuff in between. So, I, I mean, think Star Wars has, we've seen more of those, here I go again, those extremes, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> last comment. Uh, O'Pagan, O'Pagan76 um, says, the bad, he said, the bad, Hulk losing to War Machine, which he really meant was um, Iron Man. When does that ever happen in the comics? The start of the end for Hulk in the MCU. So we talked about Age of Ultron when Tony calls Veronica the Hulk Buster right. suit. That's what he meant, Hulk Buster. Hulk Buster yeah. um, and he actually corrected himself in the next comment. So good job. OP fell. He was like, yeah, I was wrong. You know, mm-hmm. my bad. So OP, accountability. We exactly. love to see. We, love to, we don't see it a lot with adults nowadays. <laughs> um, so War Machine, as he put it, or as um, it is in the movie, the Hulk Buster. Mm-hmm. Tony defeats Hulk with the Hulk Buster. Okay. You're a big Iron Man guy, mm-hmm. right? Can that happen? Is is that, you know, realistic? I mean, it's, obviously it's all made up, but, like, based off what we know of these characters in the comics, is that something that would happen, or you think Hulk would just demolish anything in front of him that Iron Man throws out there? Um, I think he'd demolish him. Yeah, Hulk yeah. would? Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it's possible. I mean, he would have to do some extreme stuff. I mean... Like, punch him in the face 30 times ain't going to do it. No, to piss him <laughs> off and make him stronger, <clears throat> theoretically bigger. Right. And that's, that's um, one of the things in these movies. The Hulk, he may get stronger, angrier, but he doesn't get bigger. Correct. Which is a not correct. Right. Right? So, which I which I don't like to see. But, yeah. no. I mean, he would Tony totally want to do some. He basically have to destroy a planet to, yeah. to get rid of the Hulk. And that's not something that he's ever in a setting no. or an environment to do. Nope. So. Yeah, and <clears throat> I don't even think we've seen the Hulk get stronger as he's gotten angrier on screen, right? right. right? I feel like he's equally as strong regardless of how angry he is right. in the MCU anyway. I mean, he might take some different actions. Yeah. Like when um he was on the campus, when, um what's his face, Edward Norton was playing the Hulk. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And they hit him with that sonic can- cannon. Yep. He took a different action. Correct. But he didn't get bigger, stronger. No, you know? no, not and at all. You're right. I, I don't think I've seen him do any of that. No, in any of these movies. I'd love to see a real, real Hulk on screen yeah. to where, yeah, he gets where he's just out of control. Like the job is just get get away from him. Mm. <laughs> um, so O'Pagan, no, you were right, dude. Um, it, it is, <clears throat> and, and he says that's the start of the end for Hulk in the MCU. Now it, Hulk did take a weird twist after Age mm. of Ultron because he goes off into space. Right, we don't see right. him until Thor Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. He's now the champion. He's Hulk the entire time. Mm-hmm. Now, I do. I really like that Hulk uh, Thor fight. Sure. I do like Thor Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. And it's hard because, as much as Hulk is still kind of fun in that movie, but it, it does, you do see kind of the beginning of the erosion. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's good and bad. Like, it's fun, it's entertaining, but at what cost? Yeah. Now we got Smart Hulk with a freaking arm sling and all this other bullshit. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's crazy that she Hulk. Why does Why does Hulk have an arm sling? <laughs> yeah, doesn't he heal? Like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Unbelievable. So, well, there you have it. And we respond. How do you get on? We respond. I don't know. You just talk some shit online, and and I, if I'm in the mood to pick you out because you have a good. Sometimes it's a good comment that starts a, a, a sparks a conversation. Sometimes we just gotta you know slap you around a little bit verbally, nicely with love. There you know. You go. There you go. Yeah. So, um, Civil War, Adrian. It's time. Let's do it. The deep dive. Um, we both revisited this movie over mm-hmm. the past um, week slash weekend. Now, it, when's the last time you, you remember watching this movie? It's been a while, dude. Yep. So much. It, it, it was almost like um, um, last week's movie, um, uh, Ultron. Yeah. It's like, did I ever watch this movie? <laughs> I mean, you get to some, some clips. Right. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. But it's like. It's like a whole new movie again. Dude, it is the best when you put <clears throat> something on and in your mind, you you mm-hmm. know you've seen it before. So you. You expect it to happen in this sequence. And you're like, wait a minute, did they add a new scene or something? Like, right. I thought that happened later. Like, and I'm just now, nah, I just, I don't know, I just go into it and act like I never saw it before. There you go. Um, but yeah, it was. I thought it was. It was a definitely a fun movie. Yep. Um, and it, it was for me. It, it was nice watching it after Age of Ultron mm-hmm. because that was kind of the origin for a lot of the things we had we seen play out here. Mm-hmm. This is also. Um, this was directed by the Russo brothers. This movie originally came out 
May 6 of 2016. $250 million budget, movie gross $1.155 billion at the box office, so very successful. Um, directed by Russo's, and then the screenplay, the screenplay was written by um, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFreely. So you probably don't recognize those names, right? No. I didn't recognize those names. But the reason I bring that up is what's important about it um, is the movies that they've written in the past. So... They've done some chronicles of Nar Narina Narina Narnia. Narnia. You ever Narnia. seen those movies? Oh yeah, yeah. You like Absolutely. them? Absolutely, yeah. So they wrote um, Prince Caspian mm-hmm. when it came out in 08, and then The Voyage of the Dawn Treater in ten. So they wrote those two movies. Oh, actually, the first one too, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. They. Yep. You ever seen Pain and Gain with The Rock and Mark Wahlberg? Um, no. It's a Michael Bay. It's a great movie. Is it? Yeah, it's funny. And fucked up, all, and it's loosely based <laughs> on a um, on an incident that happened in Miami years ago. Um, these bodybuilders, basically, one of the bodybuilders was training this crazy, crazy rich, like billionaire guy, and they kidnapped him and forced him to sign all his shit over into their names and stole a bunch of stuff from him. And eventually got caught. Mm-hmm. They tried to kill him, but they couldn't, and he survived. And it's a uh, but they, Michael Bay and these writers took this real, it's almost like Wolf of Wall Street where they took a real story yeah. and made it almost into a comedy at times, okay. but it's sick and fucked up. Um, <laughs> but, I, dude, I love it. So, anyways, why am I talking about that? They wrote that. <clears throat> so, they wrote, they also wrote the screenplay for Captain America First Avenger. Mm. They wrote the screenplay for The Winter Soldier. They wrote the screenplay for Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. And they're also going to write Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. So, when I hear their track record of movies, kind of makes me, not that I wasn't excited for these two Avengers movies, but makes me more excited because they have a history. Now, the the only MCU movie that they wrote that I think was a, a dud was Thor The Dark World. I forgot to mention that. They wrote the second Thor movie. Okay. So, but, dude, pretty good track record sure. of writer. I mean, sure. and you saw the... the um, Narnia stuff. You thought mm-hmm. that was good. I like Pain and Gain. So they wrote this movie, and they're they're on the um they're on the list for the next two Avengers movies. So that's some diversity, man. I yeah. mean, to go from the the um the War the Witch in a Wardrobe, or yeah. whatever it was, um and Narnia to you know comic book movies, yeah, and then all the stuff in between. That that's some range, right? So and te- it's two of them. They write together. So I don't know how that works. Like, you know, they just write on the same paper or they pass the laptop back and forth. I have no idea. But all I know is they know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to writing a screenplay. They pass the laptop. <laughs> yeah, like, it's your turn, you know. I mean, I, or who, maybe someone does a dialogue. The other one does a story. I have no idea. Um, but this movie, dude. So I'm, I'm going to go through. I'll go through my ups and downs, and then we'll, we'll dig into this. Um, so I got five ups and one down, Adrian. My one down, and this isn't, I was struggling to find it down, honestly. Okay. But my one down is that it feels like an Avengers movie at times. Okay. And why is that a bad thing? It, it's not really a bad thing, but the movie's Captain America Civil War. Right. So there's times where I feel like Cap is playing, um, he's in the back seat of the car. He's mm-hmm. playing, as they say, Adrian, second fiddle, you know? Uh, I don't know what that means, but he's playing second fiddle to others. The ups... Number one are the repercussions. What I mean by that is, at this point, we've seen probably a dozen MCU movies. There's been damn near wars fought on the streets, destruction. They've killed innocent people, Mm -hmm. which normally in comic book movies and action movies, you never see any repercussions, right? Like one of the things that a lot of people point out about the Batman, you know the scene where – the highway chase mm-hmm. between Penguin and the Batman. Right. And they're driving down this highway trying to, you know, he's trying to get away from Batman. Dude, how many people <clears throat> did they kill? Right. Like, the oil tanker blew up, dude. Right. I was going to say, wasn't it a fuel tank or something <laughs> yeah, involved? Like, it was cool. <laughs> it was like, it was like, uh, um... Um, what's his face is Batman going, killing, killing everybody. Oh, the Zack Snyder. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so... You, you see stuff like this, and then no one ever has to answer for it, right? Mm-hmm. So one of my, my first up for Civil War is we see them answering for some of their past behaviors, right? right? Like 
the stuff we saw in Age of Ultron, Sokovia. Mm -hmm. They have to answer for that. They answer for, I mean, there's that scene where Thaddeus Ross is playing all the clips in right. front of him. And, you know, even Cap just has enough. That's like, enough. Mm -hmm. um, that's one up. My second up is Cap versus Tony. Yep. Something that was brewing since they met each other. Even before that, because you heard him, he's like, I couldn't, you're, my dad would never stop talking about right, you. Right, he's so like, like, I hated your guts or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, always. And then, you know, Cap had that relationship with his dad. Tony didn't. Like, it mm. was, it's a, dude, it's a perfect story. Right. Third, the amount of characters in this movie and how well they handled them. Okay. Because it's one thing to have a bunch, we've seen movies where they're overstuffed with characters and no one's fucking doing anything. Mm -hmm. Every character had some type of arc to their story. Yep. Some bigger than, than others. They also introduced a handful of new characters. T'Challa right. for the first time. Spider-Man. Spider-Man for the first time. Yeah. And they did a great job of introducing them quick mm -hmm. and just having them mesh with the existing characters. Right. Sharon Carter was introduced. I mean, she was mm -hmm. in Winter Soldier, but we didn't know who she really was. Mm -hmm. And then we find out later in the um, Winter Soldier show, she becomes the power broker. Mm -hmm. Right? So introduced a lot. I mean, uh, T'Chaka introduced for the first time. Right. Even though he was killed off, but he plays a, a you know a big role in the Black Panther movies. Um, Everett Ross, I believe, is introduced the first yeah. time in this movie. Baron Zito, so so many. Zemo. Zemo. Um, number four, the Winter Soldier connection. Mm -hmm. I love how it because th that is you know if anyone goes, what's well, an Avengers movie? It feels like it at times, but the overarching plot line comes from the first two Cap movies, more the second one, but that Bucky-Steve Rogers relationship is really what drives this plot. Mm -hmm. I thought that was done very well. Yep. And then the last up for me is how well it sets up Infinity War slash Endgame. A lot of what we see here really dictates where those stories go. Right. So those are my ups, downs. Any ups, downs you want to add before we kind of deep dive into this? I'm um, not really. I, I pretty much agree okay. with all that, um, especially the Avenger feel yeah. to it, you know, as being the down, the one down. Right. So <clears throat> jump into this movie, dude. It mm. starts off, you know, Caps with his little crew. They're down in, <laughs> what is it, um, Laos or something like that? Or They're somewhere. They're somewhere. Um, they're on a little Captain America-esque mission. Mm. Oh, it was cool. It was like the team's sure. established. You know, it's, it's more covert than the Avengers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Falcon's there, who I really like Anthony Mackie as Falcon. Sure. I really do. Um, his dynamic in this movie, he was a, him, that's, it wasn't an up, but I probably could have added him in there. His relationship with Bucky and Steve here is mm -hmm. cool because Steve, or Bucky was Sam before Sam was Sam. He was his boy. Right. Right? Now, they met at different points, but, mm -hmm. so now he's coming back, and these two automatically have issues. Forget about all the shit that Bucky's been doing. Like, I love when they're in the car, and he's like, can you put your seat back a little no. bit? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, uh, you know, forgot how much I appreciated um, yeah, Anthony yeah. Mackie as Sam Wilson. Yeah. When um when um when those two were fighting Spider-Man, yes. and they, uh, they got put on their back or something yep. like that. And he's like, I hate you. Yep. Or something like that was, that was funny. Yeah. Cause he uses the, um, his little drone. He's like, you couldn't have done that earlier. He's right. Like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. And then the fact that they ended up getting their show together, like I do want to revisit that show. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't as, it, it wasn't bad. It was okay. It had its moments. It's, it served its purpose. It did. It served right. its purpose, but it did have some, some high spots and some stuff that will probably sure. will, fo you know, be followed up on in the next Captain America movie. Yeah. That insane Killer Captain America, dude. Oh, yeah, that, dude. dude. That was some, that was some uh, John boys. Walker. That was some boy right? stuff right there. Dude, that was sick. <laughs> it was some boy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, it starts off where they basically, they cause a lot of destruction. They kill off some um, Wakandans that were in this, so, uh, some building wherever they were sure. at, uh, embassy or whatnot. And, you know, they're uh, crossbones we see. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually liked. I like this guy's crossbones. He only got a little bit of shine. I mean, crossbones is, as you put it, kind of a sideline character right, right. in a lot of the story. But I thought the look was cool, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of followed up. He was he was you know part of Shield in the past and got all fucked up in Winter Soldier. So I thought yeah. that was cool. He came back, but he has this bomb. He's trying to kill Cap. Wanda, you know, controls the explosion for the most part, but then in saving Cap, she kind of throws it up, blows up this building, kills a bunch of innocent people. 
And that is kind of the theme. It's, you know, I mentioned the repercussions. And if you've ever been part of our deep dives, we're going to jump around. We're going to fast forward. We're going to slow down. We may go back. Who knows? Yep. There's no rules. Yep. It's just a conversation. May say, say some shit that's not true. Yeah, we may say stuff from another movie. Just like, saying. Remember when Thanos snapped in this movie? <laughs> 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 so you better fact check it, too. Uh, um, but it, it leads to really the, the centerpiece of this story is that the divide between the Avengers. Um, it's another episode of them there to help people but also in doing that they hurt some people and the government feels like hey what y'all doing is good but we should be in charge essentially mm -hmm. right sure um so we get to that scene where they're all at the table and thaddeus ross is going through we talked about a little bit earlier where all the shit they've done recently and they introduce the sokovia accords so shit kind of gets real um how do you feel about this whole you know it almost brings real life into comics, right? Because sure. a lot of times comics, shit happens, explosions, they're fighting, and you never hear this side of it. Mm -hmm. I actually really like that. That's why it's one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. How would you feel about the almost reality-based approach? It was cool, but it, it, it makes you kind of... Th this is one of those movies that took me through a range of emotions, mm. right? Because, you know, you think about Big Brother and, and, and the, the power that they wield, and, you know, they can't leave something established or good alone. They have to come in and put their own spin on it and take yep. over. So, you know, it, it, it kind of, you know, took me one way emotionally when that stuff kind of started happening. But then you got to think, yeah, they kind of need it. Because, again, mm -hmm. why were they even there? Why were they there, you know, tracking down somebody that it, the local authorities should have known about? Right. You know, they nobody even knew they were in, a, in in some other country. So what gives you the right to go into another country at will? Right. No, no, no passport, no, no security checks. No, nothing. you just show up mm -hmm. and you hunting people. Correct. Right? And, then, and then after all this, you know, you kill a bunch of innocent people. So I so I get it. But a lot of a lot of a lot of politicizing. Yeah. In that. Yep. Uh, which which is what made the movie, I guess. Correct, right? yeah. Yeah, it, it does kind of force you to see both sides, sure. right? Because, like, in one sense, I mean, you're cheering, hey, Avengers are there, dude, they're going to save the day mm -hmm. for the most part. But from the other side, like, what gives, just because you have powers, you mm -hmm. can just, like, go wherever you want, do whatever you want. Right. And, and also, when I was growing up with this, there was no politicking, no oversight like this right. in the comics. You know, they made comics around things like the Vietnam War mm -hmm. or or racism or or sexism. You right. know, they made things about, but there was like no real, the, the only oversight that I saw in comics coming up was S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Yep. So, um, yeah, I, and I thought it, it, it really did a good job of setting the tone for this movie. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you didn't know what to expect, but you knew kind of, I guess what roads we were going to travel. Right. Um, Bucky's presence. So he's mind controlled under, you know, a lot of this movie. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and in the past. Um, and then we eventually see where that really reaches its boiling point when it's revealed that Bucky killed Tony Stark's parents. Correct. Um, that is one of the, the biggest moments in this movie. Mm. Zemo is playing the master chess player, right? He's just, right. these are pawns to him. Mm. He gets them to, and again, we'll, we'll go back. There's a bunch of other shit I want to, but this, I think this is very important. Um, he gets the three of them in that facility where all the other winter soldiers were, where he killed them. Mm -hmm. But he shows the footage of Bucky killing Tony's parents under mind control. Cap knows about it. And this is where it's like, I can see all sides. Sure. Like, you understand why Tony's pissed. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's funny because he was just at the point where he was starting to see Cap's side. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you know, he even said to, uh, you know, Cap in one thing, I don't care, he killed my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, in this, do you fall on, on side Tony or side Cap? Or is um, it just so hard? To <laughs> it's It's hard, man, because it's like... That's a lot of power. Yeah. That's a lot of power. Um, and I think that is at some point said, you know, where's where's um, the Hulk and Thor? You know, if we lost, you know, uh, a crate load of mm -hmm. nukes, you know, that we'd, we'd have to answer to somebody. So you got two of the more power, most powerful people in the universe somewhere. You know, right. nobody even knows where they are. Um, we, we, we need to kind of, you know, get a get a handle on this kind of stuff. So I, I definitely feel both sides. I, I still think that. 
the character should have been on the opposite side. Tony should have been the 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 Rep, Captain Rep, America yeah. point of view, and Captain America, the, you know, the everlasting Boy Scout should mm-hmm. have been all, for all the rules and stuff. But it it was what it was. Yeah. See, I, I why I was uh, okay with it. The Cap being on that side is because of his perspective on <clears throat> when the government has too much control. Like he's lived through it. Sure. Like he saw it on the other side in Germany, mm-hmm. right? Um, there, there even was a, a line in Age of Ultron where I forget who he was talking to, and he was talking about the um, the twins, Maximoff twins, right. and how they allowed the government or whoever it was to um, experiment on them and they enhance volunteered. their powers. Yeah, they volunteered. Right. And someone was saying, like, you know, how could you do that, right? Because they're looking at it from the U.S. perspective, like they're our enemy. And then Cap was like, yeah, imagine that, allowing the government to experiment on you to help fight for your cause. Like, right. he sees it because that was him on the other side. So he's he doesn't look at them as villains. He looks at them as kids, like he kids said. fighting for what they believe is right, no different than what he did, that we just are in different countries. Right. What's right over there is wrong over here, vice versa. So... Um, he's able to see. So I, I think that's why I, I was okay and I didn't feel like it was missed or, or off out of place because mm. to me that was in his, at least in the MCU cap, that's in his DNA. Like sure. good, I'm going to do good no matter who mm. I'm going to be opposed. I, even if it opposes what the public looks at as the good side, mm-hmm. right? Which he did here. It's like, oh, right. government. Yeah, you know, he was a soldier. He was part of the government, but he's like, I don't want them. Because his, his point was to Thaddeus, well, what happens, like, if we don't agree? <laughs> right. What happens then? And he's like, well, then you shut down, like, you know. No, that was uh, Black Widow, she said. Oh, that. yeah, yeah. She's like, you know, what happens if we don't agree on how to handle something? Yeah. Then you retire. You retire, yeah. yeah. And they're like, that's not in Cap's DNA, dude. Right. He's not going to let that happen. Well, like I said, in, in a previous uh, podcast, it's like, he, he's a soldier. Right. And somebody said to him, you know, you do you 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 can't not be a soldier. Mm-hmm. You're always looking for a war. Yeah. So Yep. So um yeah, so I, I get and for me, I'm on cap side throughout this movie. Mm-hmm. The end part does get a little tough because the the part that and he even owns this in his, you know, letter he sends to Tony <laughs> after, but the part that's fucked up for me is that you knew that Bucky killed his parents. Right. And you not that you protected Bucky. I get that he's your friend, mm-hmm. but you withheld that information. Right. And then he has to find out from a third party. And now, don't matter what you say right now, dude, I'm going to try to kill you. That's it. <laughs> but it led to an awesome scene at the end of mm-hmm. the, the fight between the three of them. Oh, yeah. I yeah. thought was amazing. I also, <clears throat> I also think the politics is how we got introduced to uh, T'Challa, you know, Wakanda, yeah, absolutely. the Black Panther, right. things like that. Yeah. Because outside of that, he wouldn't have even had a reason to be there Correct. in the first place. Yeah, how'd you feel about um, his introduction, how that was handled, and just how they presented this character in the movie? It's the first time we've seen T'Challa. Mm-hmm. We Wakanda was mentioned in Age of Ultron right. briefly, and then that was it. Because of the metal. The metal, yep. Right. Um, so, yeah, the vibranium that Ultron was after and ended right. up actually getting. How did you feel about the Black Panther, um, ha- how they handled Black Panther in this movie? I, th- <clears throat> I think it was perfect, dude, yeah. how they they didn't just introduce him. Um, they, they brought him in. It, it was like a dignitary in training kind of a thing, mm. you know, with uh, T'Chaka, you know, being the father there, and he brought his son to experience, you know, uh, politics. Yep. So I love that, you know, that, 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 that father son interaction, mm-hmm. you know, he, you know, he put his hand on his, on, on, um, T'Challa's face, you know, like I'm proud of you kind yeah. of a thing. And he, you know, uh, T'Challa, um, kissed T'Challa's hand, like out of respect yep. and, and honor. So that was a moment for me right there. So yeah. I love the way they introduced this whole thing. Yeah. I, I thought he was like, you could tell that there was a different level of respect for T'Challa. Right. Like even after like after his dad died, he's now the king of Wakanda, right? Mm-hmm. And just the way that like when um they're all when when Black Panther's chasing Bucky mm-hmm. and and Cap and they end up getting caught. Right. And they don't realize that Black Panther is T'Challa because at this point they don't know what Wakanda is. They think Wakanda's some poor country, right? right? Um so 
he takes off the mask and he's like, oh, your highness. Like everyone calls him your highness. Right. And it's just cr how the demeanor changed, right? Like sure. we're trying to arrest this guy. And now like, oh, oh shit, that's the king of Wakanda. Right. It, it just, it, it showed everyone looked up to him. Right. And then you talk about, you know, from a power set, I really think they did a good job of showing how powerful Black Panther is. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he's, dude, he goes hand to hand with Captain America, mm -hmm. like lighting him up too. Oh, and yeah. it seemed like he was, it was light work for him. Yep. I really like the fight scenes with Black Panther. Yep. I mean, he was holding his own against both of them. Yeah. You know, uh, so that was, that was impressive. I, I didn't, I didn't think about it when I first saw the movie, but when they're running mm -hmm. in the street. Faster than cars. Faster than cars, yeah. right? And then Captain America pushed out. Yeah. And, and jumped in to you know uh, hijack somebody. Yes, yeah. stole the car and stuff. That, so that was funny. And then they just like popping around and stuff. But yeah, they was they was moving. Yeah, they were moving, dude. Yeah. yeah, it is cool to see because you get caught up, especially in a movie like this that's really grounded. You almost see them as people, but mm -hmm. you forget like they're they're supers, right? right? So to see that that was done really well. Yeah, like because you hear about how fast they always are, but to see right. it done like that. Yeah, that was like, pretty. These cool. guys are moving, dude. Yep. Um. Yeah. It was and a lot of I mean. The fight scenes, I, well, why I like this movie more than some of these others, it was a good mix. It mm -hmm. had story, it had drama, it had emotion, mm -hmm. and it had action, you know. Mm -hmm. And it had humor at times, too, and it wasn't over the top. Mm -hmm. I think the big one of the big differences between this and Age of Ultron, the humor fit in this movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too much. Did right. you get a sense of it? No, being, not at all. Not, not like all. Age of Ultron, it's no. every two seconds. Yeah. Oh, um, so I, before we get too far into the movie. Yeah. The Martha moment. Yeah, what was your Martha moment, Adrian? Okay, so when they're doing the stakeout, right, and um, Captain America fighting that guy, what was his name? Um, that was Crossbones. His, crossbones, yep. right? And he takes his he takes his mask off or whatever, and he's explaining to him why he's there. Yeah, and he says uh, the the person that's really behind this is is Bucky. Yeah, and that was. His moment. So when, oh, he, when yeah, he heard he froze, Bucky, yep. he just kind of froze yes, up, yes. which is why he missed the bomb, yep. which is why they got in trouble in the first place. And okay. he even said later on, when I heard Bucky, I just kind of froze. Yes. Right. So That's right. So okay. that was the Bucky. That was the Martha moment. That was the Martha moment, moment yeah. yeah. But that one I understand. Uh, I feel like it was done better than Martha. I... Yeah. That, you're only saying that because you, that's the first time you ever heard, of, heard it, but... And Batman, Superman, there's all Martha, 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 MCU and people are like you're a DC hater. They did the Martha moment justice. Yeah, because that makes it. Bucky's your friend. You thought he's dead. He came sure. back. You're not even 100 percent sure if that was Bucky. Not you think he is. You don't mm -hmm. know what the fuck's going on. Right. And then he mentions it. It's mm -hmm. enough to kind of fuck you talking about. Right. Versus like you say Martha. Why you say Martha? <laughs> 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 so, anyways, if you can't tell, um, we're not a big fan of that. Right, moment, right. But. So, no, anyway, I, I want to bring that. Because yeah, that's, but no, that's, that's good, dude. That's early on in the movie, yeah. and we're like going toward the end. Yeah, now, so. yep. That that was the catalyst for all the bullshit in this movie. Yep, yep. Just Cap and his friends, man. Because yes, and that's the thing where I've I've said this before. I think that you know, if I'm Cap, I'm sorry, Bucky. You got to go, bro. You oh, causing yeah. too much fucking drama, exactly. man. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, that's the eternal Boy Scout of him. Mm -hmm. And he did figure out that he's not doing it under his own power. You know, right. he's he's being mind controlled, and because he figures this is my friend, I didn't know him yep. as this. This there's got to be something going on, right. right? So, and they ultimately do figure out that he's been mind controlled this whole time, right? Yeah, um, and you know, we talked about Sebastian Stan earlier as Bucky Barnes, and he just. The way he expresses like the emotion of that character on screen really, really was, I think, a huge piece of this movie because right. it's like he he was conflicted. Even when the guy started, when Zemo started reciting the words, like he knows he's going into mind control right. and the fear. Yep. And then once he gets to like, remember when they they captured him? Mm -hmm. They're at the compound or whatever. Everyone's under arrest, mm -hmm. and Zemo shows up because he killed the actual therapist. Right. And he starts reciting the words, and Bucky is trying to get out of the restraints. Right. And he's pounding on it, right? And he's like, dude, he's scared. Yeah, yeah. 
And then when he gets to that last word, whatever it was, I think it was homecoming, because um, obviously I don't understand the language, but they put the th- subtitles. Mm. Um, but when he gets to that one, there's just a switch. Right. And then it's like he becomes menacing and cold. Like, that's a it's great acting. Right. He's like, I'm ready to comply. Yep. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, ready to comply. Yep. yep. Um, so, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm torn on, on the Zemo, because I agree with you. I think uh, it. As far as like who the character looks like in the comics and betrayal, mm-hmm. it was a. I don't even know <laughs> if I could say miscast, maybe just mis portrayal writing, but he still was a good villain, though. He was a good villain. He just visually didn't fit yes. the bill for Baron Zemo. Correct. Like, I would have been okay. Everyone's got fucking costumes, dude. Just sure. throw one on him. Yeah. We don't have to explain why he's wearing it. Just fucking put it on him, right. you know? Or at least have him look more menacing and yes. not like, you know. Um, the the kid next door watching a hot he you know his hot neighbor or right something, right something like that because he was Just supposed weird. to be like some war um leader or whatever they mentioned some, yeah. how he he ran all these missions or whatever exactly. in Sokovia. he, he, didn't look he like does it. not look like that at no. all you know look like um I don't even know that um anyway so he not, works not at H and R Block or something you know he's ready to do <laughs> your taxes like <laughs> that yeah he don't he didn't look menacing but he was um. But he was a good actor, so it came sure. across in his demeanor. But yeah, the visually wasn't quite there. But I, I really like Sebastian Stan kind of relaying those different emotions throughout this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the um, we mentioned Black Panther. Spider Man's also introduced, mm-hmm. and it, watching it again, dude, I, I remember when I saw it for the first time. I had no idea who Tom Holland was, mm-hmm. but I was like, dude, that's Peter Parker, right. like. Perfect, because he was younger here. He's, I'm obviously he's aged. I mean, he's in his early twenties now, but he right. was probably like 19 when this yeah. happened. Yeah. Dude, he looked like a high. He looked like Peter Parker. Sure, sure. And the like, I th- I thought it was great casting and handled perfectly in this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, the the younger Aunt May was you know different, but sure. makes sense. Like that's his aunt. She's not going to be 100 years old. She doesn't always have to be 100 years old. Right. Um, and I, I like that, even though it's a very different origin from what we're used to from Spider-Man, because he's only been Spider-Man for six months, and then he meets Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. That don't happen in the comics. No. But I thought it was handled really well. Sure. I like, and I really liked his portrayal of Spider-Man, too. Mm-hmm. Um, the the humor while he's fighting just really felt like a Spider-Man comic. Sure. Dude, it really added so much to that airport scene. He And what... what I liked about what they did with the Spider-Man is that Spider-Man is very animated in the yeah. comics and they made him very animated in, in this movie because he's always bouncing off of something. He's always mm-hmm. trying to, um, um, you know, get himself out of the path of something. Yep. I, they don't show him using his spider sense, though. No. They don't give you the sense that he's using his spider sense, though. Right. A, a, a lot in these movies. Correct. Which is the really the only is would be like the cherry on top of the yeah because you, know, you see a lot more of that in the comics yeah, yeah yeah I think one scene I remember seeing it was um it was in Infinity War when he's on the bus and he's sitting there and all the hairs on his arms stand up yeah like we but to your point I mean that's like the one that comes out sure. to me and there's some others but I do wish we we see it a lot more in Across the Spider Verse mm-hmm. yes you know with Miles and we well see because it. they can do like the little wiggly yeah. things off his head but i mean but they can also do it different ways in the movie too yeah like kind of like a um i, I like maybe a black and, a, a black and white flash of something mm-hmm. you know um and then he moves as a result or something like that yeah but yeah I, I think they they need to do more of that yeah it's just like take the, out some of the comedy right and put more of that in it it's just like the wolverine with you know his senses Mm-hmm. Like, dude, how many times in the comics or a cartoon you see Wolverine sniffing his way to the, you know, the end? Sure. <laughs> like, you know, it, but but we don't see it that much. And, you know, he'll, he'll always show, oh, there were Sentinels here. Or I can still smell Magneto or whatever right, it right, is. Right. Um, but, yeah, I... I you Charles know, been shirt pocket pocket, yeah. it again. Yeah. Charles doesn't have pants on. <laughs> I can smell it. <laughs> oh, <my God. clears throat> anyway, but, um, dude, the how about, how do you feel about... Spider-Man suit in this. To me, it's one of the best looking Spider-Man suits. I ever. agree, dude. It's one of the best. Yeah. Um, I, again, they they just went real high tech after this, mm-hmm. but this was the best suit. And and yeah. Tom Holland inside the suit. Yeah. I mean, he looked like a kid inside of the yeah. suit, right? Instead of you know, um, Toby all Jack. Toby all whatever. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I I thought it was it was definitely better than the um 
the OG Toby suit and mm-hmm. then the um, even the Andrew Garfield um, suits. Mm-hmm. Those those were good. Like I'm not sure. knocking those, but this one this looked like Spider. I mean, I'm looking at the Spider Man behind you. Dude, it looks like that. Right. It's that bright blue, that bright red. He's smaller, so it fits mm-hmm. more. Um, and I love the eyes, mm-hmm. the eyes moving, and just the shape that right. was that was perfect. I actually read somewhere that the suit that we see is not the suit that he filmed with. They actually digitally altered the suit after. So I'm curious to see what the original one was and how different it was. You know, um, if it was a suit at all, it might have just had yeah. on like a. a Giant green. No, it was because they they had a different suit planned. Oh, okay. And for whatever reason, after you know, in production, they decided to go with this one. Oh. Um, I I read somewhere too that when they were working on a the movie, they planned on giving him the Iron Spider suit instead of this one off the bat, but mm-hmm. then changed their mind, which I'm glad they did. Mm-hmm. The Iron Spider suit was cool in Infinity War. Sure. But it was nice to have this first. Mm-hmm. You know, they and, and I mean. We could do a whole episode on 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 screen suits, like oh yeah, you know may, may, maybe that'll be a, a hit or miss um, little. You never know, a little preview of the future, Adrian. Now, does suits mean like character, everything, the whole character, or no, just, just how suit? well the suit looked? Yeah, because okay. you could have a shitty ass character, but it looked awesome, you know. Yeah, um, I even liked. I think overall, some of the best comic suits were in this movie. I liked Iron Man suit. This was before it got too crazy <clears throat> with the nanobites where it like just felt like it was on his body. Like this was still when it was a Iron Man suit. Right. War Machine looked probably best he's ever looked. He, he looked like <laughs> a war machine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not an Iron Patriot. I like Cap suit. It was yeah. the traditional one, but it was also a little worn like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I I who else? Black Panther. I love oh, yeah. the original Black Panther suit. Oh yeah. The was, silver and yeah. like the the purple is cool with the powers and stuff, but I think this suit looks better. Yeah, but yeah, all in, I mean, outside of you know Zemo just wearing like his um, street his street, street clothes. clothes, yeah, like she looks like he's waiting tables at fucking Applebee's or something. Right. Like table of three, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be helping you. I'm Baron. Yeah, don't drink anything he brings to your table. <laughs> um, the airport scene, dude. This has oh, yeah. got to be one of the best set pieces in the mcu mm. like i love it it starts with a typical tony stark like isn't it funny how you run to people in the airport he's right. like hey, or um what's his name he's like yeah yeah it's real funny tony and the it, it was it was fun because it's what you would want from an avengers fight like i don't necessarily want the avengers trying to kill each other mm-hmm. you could tell they were pulling their punches sure and it came across so it made it fun you're like no one's gonna really die here but it's cool to see some of these guys because we always see them working together against mm-hmm. others, right? Well, I mean, um, one even brought it up because um, Black Widow and yes. in, in, um, Hawkeye, like, do are we really fighting? Yes, her? Yeah. Well, it depends on how hard you hit me or something like that. And then Wanda she just, snatches her out. It's like, <laughs> dude, you pulling your punches. She just like, whoosh, yep. Black Black Widow hits the plane with her head. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, one part I thought that was funny, and, and some characters more than others, like T'Challa's there to kill Bucky. Right. There's no, he ain't trying to kill no one else, but you get in the way, he's gonna, he's gonna right. fucking whoop your ass a little bit. Yep. But he's fighting Clint, and Clint's there, like he thinks it's like we're at the cookout, we're hanging out, right? He's like, <laughs> you know, he's like, hey, I don't know, we've not been introduced, but I'm Clint. <laughs> he's like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> and then just whips his ass. Yep, yep. But that, that is, it's funny because that happens there, but if you remember in Endgame, when, um, they're they're moving the gauntlet or whatever. T'Challa sees Clint with the gauntlet and he calls him by his first name. He goes, "Clint, give it to me." So he did remember his name, and and it was just a cool little callback. I thought, sure. sure. Um, but but before we go too deep into the airport scene, yeah. another scene that was real cool to me was when Cap first found Bucky in his apartment. Oh, and yeah. then a whole apartment going down that the stairs was, scene. Yes. Yeah, that that was badass right there. Yep. When, and then Bucky like throws a guy off the stairs. Cap says, "He was like, come on, man, right. really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, that was cool. And that that led to what we talked about earlier when they're running down the street. Yes, and that that was the first time we saw Black Panther. Yes, because Bucky jumps off the roof, mm-hmm. and then you hear footsteps. You think it's Cap, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's Black Panther. He was basically Black Panther was following Cap around. Yeah, um, they even followed him to the that that um, that hideout with the other. Went went to soldier. Yep, yep. So he was follow, he was trailing somebody right. this whole time because he was like like you said he was there to kill uh uh 
uh, Bucky. Yep. He didn't give a shit about anything else. Nope. That was his only mission. Yep. Um, it was cool, too. And he, I mean, he told Natasha right after that, like, I'm going to kill Bucky Barnes. Right. So you should just stay out of this. Like, I'm going to kill. Like, I remember the exact words. But basically, like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Stay right. out of my way. Exactly. <laughs> and it just shows you just. And, and that's why, you know, when people go, well, well how could you. Why would you want to recast him? Because of how important that character is. Right. How well he was set up. Yep. And just what he means to Marvel in general. I mean, a lot of these big events in the comics, T'Challa's there. Right. Civil War, or Secret War, like T'Challa's a part of them. Mm-hmm. And to not have that, have a character that was built up so well and then not continue on, it, it's sad. It's a disservice. Come on, dude. A black trillionaire? Right. Yeah, they're going to kill him. Matter of fact, you know, I'm glad you said that, Adrian. <laughs> I, got, I got something here. So this is how we do an only comic. We're going to pause on the airport scene real quick. So you, you said this, um, that your theory is why they won't recast him is they don't want black guy to be the richest guy in the MCU. Right. Okay. So Forbes, they must be watching the show. Of course. Why wouldn't they? I mean, everyone mm-hmm. else is, right? So they put together a list of the wealthiest fictional characters of all time. Okay. So they have individuals like Jay Gatsby's on here, you know, from okay. the great Gatsby. He's cool. number 16 with a net worth of 1.35 billion. Um, I don't know who Lady Mary Crawley is, but she's 1.4. Miss Monopoly from the game, one point six billion. Okay. Laura Croft, okay. Tomb Raider, one point seven. Uh, Walden Schmidt, he's the guy from. Um, you ever seen Two and a Half Men with Charlie Sheen? The show. I, I've I've not watched the show, but I've seen okay. it in the commercials. Well, there. when Charlie Sheen got in trouble for all the shit he got in trouble for and got kicked off, Ashton Kutcher was on the show and yep. and, and he played this rich guy. Well, his character is worth one point seven billion. Oh, okay. So. Montgomery Burns from um, Simpsons, mm-hmm. two billion. Um, let's see, Christian Gray from Fifty Shades of Gray, two point nine billion. Richie Rich, the cartoon guy, seven point eight five billion. So he's rich. Do we have some Bruce Wayne? Some well, Tony uh, Stark? Funny you ask. There? Bruce Wayne, number seven, twelve point four five billion. Okay. Charles Foster Kane, I'm assuming from Citizen Kane, <clears throat> is fifteen billion. Tony Stark, sixteen point seven billion. So according to Forbes, Tony's richer than Bruce Wayne. You agree mm-hmm. with that? Yeah. Number six, Carla Sile Cullen. Oh shit, from um Twilight, the Cullens. Okay. Sixty two billion. Wait, which one is which one is that though? This fella right here. Oh, the doctor. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so he's worth sixty two billion. I, I would expect that, that number to be higher than I would expect that number, but also probably higher because he's been around for hundreds of years. Mm. I, mean, they, they, I mean, one of their whole things is that vampires do is they set up trusts so they can will themselves money throughout time. Yeah. So they, they can will themselves wealth. Right. Okay. So this guy is a um, <clears throat> Lord of the Rings character, small guy, 73 billion. This fella here. Dragon. The dragon? Yeah, I guess dragons oh, got um, dragons got well. Well, yeah, yeah, they big into gold and stuff and precious there you metals go. and stuff like that. Yeah. Scrooge McDuck. You know Scrooge, right? Oh, yeah. Eighty eight billion. He's number two. Nice. Now, do you know who number one is? Um You wanna guess? I, I, uh, dead black dude? Yep. Black Panther. <laughs> Net worth ten trillion dollars. That's dude. insane. Not even close. Not no even one's close. Not even Scrooge McDuck with his eighty-eight billion is close to T'Challa with ten trillion. So Scrooge McDuck is <laughs> approaching one hundred billion. Correct. Right? And there's how many one hundreds in a trillion? One hundred, right? Yes. So <laughs> he's one. He, he so he's nine hundred one hundred billions away from. A trillion, mm-hmm. and then T'Challa is at what? Ten trillion? Ten trillion? Ten I mean, I, trillion? Come on, dude. Yeah, I, you couldn't, you couldn't, have, you couldn't have been further away, no. further apart. Nope. So um, anyway, that's anyways, that's why they killed him off. And they, that's why they killed him off. That makes more sense than you know honoring Chadwick Boseman. So, um, anyways, um, but yes, airport scene, a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of good moments, a lot of good um, comic relief, a lot mm-hmm. of good. Talking shit back and forth. Like, I love um, Spider-Man slash Peter's almost ignorance. Right. Right? Na- naivete. Naive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's but, like, 
hey, dude, this is cool. You know, I mean, you know that somebody yeah. even called me to come here right, to do this. Right. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm Cap just trying Steel to impress Mr. Stark. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Everything's Mr. Stark. <laughs> and I think it was was it, um, Sam that was like, dude, I don't know if you've been in a fight before. It's usually not this much talking. <laughs> He's all impressed. Are those wings carbon fiber? Right. Oh, shit, you got a metal hand. But one thing that they did show which I think a lot of people lose sight of because Peter Parker's a scrawny kid, mm -hmm. how strong Spider-Man is. Right. When Winter Soldier, super seer, I mean, he's just as strong as Cap, right? Right. With the metal arm, goes to punch him, and he just stops him like nothing. Right, and, and he, of course, he's talking to him while he's yes. on it, right? But also when he, um, what he, he yelled up a, a cargo container or yeah. something at the end, and we, he, he was talking through that. Correct. Like, right. dude, Spider Man is strong. Right. Yeah, he's like t the ten ton level. Yeah. Like, Cap Cap is like eight hundred to two tons. Right. And so I'm assuming that the Winter Winter Soldier right, is right too. there, right? Right. So, but yeah, Spider Man is like ten to twelve tons. Yeah. Dude, dude it's it, the only reason why Cap got the better hand is just battle experience. Like sure. this was like one. I mean, this is really Spider Man's first real fight. Out, outside of this, he's been stopping people from like you know stealing candy on Halloween. And shit. Exactly. Like, exactly. But even Tony said, uh, like when he first was was talking to him in his room you know the tensile strength of your your webbing yeah and he's like dude you stopped a you know two-ton car moving 40 miles an hour that's a lot of people don't understand what it takes for that to happen right because we, we're not talking just bench press power correct which is what most of these power scales come on right mm -hmm. when they say you can you know thor can do like 90 tons or 80 tons and the hulk can do a, is a hundred plus class and all that that means basically they can bench press that kind of weight yeah right but when you also talking about stopping things mm -hmm. you know to two, a two-ton projectile moving at 40 50 60 miles an hour that's a lot different than bench pressing, right? Right. So anyway, just putting that, putting that in perspective. Yeah. But again, portraying uh, Spider-Man's power, stopping you know Winter Soldier's you know uh, fist in motion while talking shit to him. Yeah. Holding up a cargo container, which we who knows how much those right, are, right? right? While he's having a conversation with somebody. Yep. So yeah, yeah, pretty strong dude. And dude, literally giving it to both Winter Soldier and Falcon at the same time. Right. I mean, just teeing off on them while he's talking shit and getting to know them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, but it was, it, you know, um, Sam, I mean, Sam's also a soldier, right? Mm -hmm. So he, right. he's he been here before, so he got the better of Spider-Man with his little drone. Sure. He, you know, Spider-Man ties him up. He thinks I'm done. I'm going to go and press Tony, you know, Mr. Stark some more. And then the drone comes by and just, you know, whips him out of that, that hangar anyway. Right. Again, battlefield experience. Yeah. You know. Yep. So... And um, I, I like to. It was cool too when when he jumps in. He calls him Underoos for some reason, and he just comes in and snatches. Like, dude, he just shows up and snatches Cap Shield. Right. Yep. <laughs> and yep. I, I like their little um their moment, you know, where they're fighting, and then even Cap's kind of throwing some shit back. He's like, dude, like you got some heart, kid. Where are you from? Queens. Right. And then he just like Brooklyn. Brooklyn, like, and it's so cool because if I mean we're we're right oh, you know, right next door to New York, and my wife's from Brooklyn, and if you right. know anything about New York, like you get that, sure, <laughs> like all sure. these they're always especially Brooklyn Queens, mm -hmm. they're always at each other, right? Yeah. But that I think that was a cool moment. Yeah. Um, and you get to see we talked about it with T'Challa, how badass T'Challa is. Right. I mean, my man shows up at the airport, he's going punch for punch with Cap. Mm -hmm. He actually leaves claw marks on Cap's shield, right? Because they're both vibranium. Sure. Um, I thought that Wanda too. You see Wanda's power here. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes she gets kind of overshadowed, but prior to her becoming Scarlet Witch, mm -hmm. by all the other people. But think about you know when Tony's up there and, and Hawkeye kind of distracts him with the arrow, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden she's just ripping cars out and dropping them. I mean, when she left the compound, when right. she took Vision and sent him like dude thousands of feet in the ground, right? right. She's powerful even before she became Scarlet Witch. I, I, I think they spend too much on the theatrics of her power, right? Yeah. It's, it's like I uh, would have it with the hula hoop motion in order to. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, come on, dude. You don't need to sit there and, and do all of this <laughs> to wield a spell, you know? Just like, whatever. Yeah. Cha cha now, y'all. <laughs> it's like you about to start playing that, you know? I mean, when he right, does a like, little, yeah. Um, but yeah, this scene, and then it, it really. Couple, couple big things happen here that mm -hmm. have an ongoing effect. One, Vision tries to take out Sam, and then he ends up hitting Rhodey. Right. And paralyzes, paralyzes him. him. Yep. So it's like, that's what I, I like about this movie is as much as it's fun at times, there's a lot of emotion there. Sure. Like, sure. and now you're dealing with, you know, 
You got Cap's buddy, Bucky, they're trying to kill. Mm -hmm. Iron Man's boy is Rhodey. He's the guy who's always been there for him at his darkest moments. Mm -hmm. And now you paralyzed him. Mm -hmm. Now it's personal. You know, that that was a big moment. And then Natasha, you know, flipping script and letting them, because she realized, like, you know what, they're right. Mm -hmm. And Cap's always been there for her. Sure. It's just so many, it's so cool when you start breaking it down, like how these stories are all kind of woven together, if you will. Um, And she even says, like, she's shooting (laughs) T'Challa with that little, you know, electricity or whatever mm-hmm. as they're getting away and she's like i, I said i'd help you. huh javelins there you go she says I, I said i'd help you find them not capture them it's different right. <laughs> and then they sure. take off um but all in all do airport scene one of the top i mm-hmm. think very done very well mm-hmm. um ant-man mm-hmm. so th- there was i think a couple movies in between age of ultron and civil war one of them was ant-man mm-hmm. so paul rudd who I, great ant-man yeah he suffered from just Marvel trying to do too much with his third movie, mm-hmm. and they fucked it up. Right. But I thought the first two Ant-Mans were pretty fun. Yeah, I, I, I like those movies. Um, and, and it also showed off showed off his range. Um, oh, the, the little guy's now the big guy. Yeah. That's what Sam says, right? Yep. So a lot of stuff going on, but you also felt that they were all pulling their punches. The yes. only one that was in killer mode was T'Challa. Right. So... Dude, I love when Ant Man he's um he's on Hawkeye's arrow. He's like, All right, arrow arrow guy and he shoots him <laughs> and he gets in Iron Man's suit and uh-huh. he starts unplugging it. And Tony's like, Who's speaking? Right. He's like, It's me, you're conscious. We haven't spoken in a while. You have to bring this thing into the shop. He just starts unplugging shit. Right, right. Um another part I thought was funny was when Wanda drops all the cars on Tony mm. and then his AI is like, Multiple contusions detected. He's like, Yeah, yeah I detected those yeah. two. <laughs> Um, but then they end up getting away. We see the raft, yes, which is usually you see in Spider-Man comics, right? Mm-hmm. The raft outside of New York, the prison where a lot of like you know Rhino and all those guys are held. But we see the raft, which I thought was done pretty well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That the, the concept of of something like that, where you have this this facility, um, and and I don't know if there's a, there would actually be a need for something like that today, right? But that would be pretty cool. I yeah. mean, if I, I I think the like the container ship uh, concept is also pretty cool. You just like a like a cruise ship mm-hmm. that just floats around forever in open waters, and you uh, in order to yeah, you can technically get out of your cell, maybe. But you're a thousand miles shark infested, whatever. Right, you ain't going nowhere. Nope. So that that was pretty cool. Right. So, yeah, we see. And, and Sam was the one who realized, like, dude, we're all not going to get out of here because mm-hmm. Cap's like trying to get everyone. He's like, no, you go. You go do what you need to do. Some of us are just going to have to take the fall. Right. Um, so they bring them in. And this is what was kind of um, maybe threatened early in the movie. Right. Like, if you guys go against us, we're going to be on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. Like, we literally will arrest you. And that's what en- ends up happening a um, couple times, actually. First, they bring him into the facility, and then, you know, eventually the raft. But Cap gets away. Um, Tony shows up to the raft. Mm-hmm. I love how much he likes to piss off Thaddeus Ross. <laughs> All right. No, no, no click. Yeah, like, I'll put uh, – you can call. I'll put you on hold, like, watching the line blink. Right. <laughs> like, just, you know, just to be an ass. Yep, that, that ego. Yep. But he go, you know, he goes to visit them. Doesn't get treated that well, but cuts out the audio. And then Sam, and it just shows you, I guess, you know, it's almost like maybe they were molding Sam back then to become Cap. Who knows? Like, but they show like he's more mature than some of the other ones. Like, you know, Clint's pissed because obviously, mm-hmm. but as much as Sam's pissed, he understands what Tony's doing mm-hmm. and he actually helps him. Right. He tells him where he's going. Um, but then it just goes to show you how much of a fucking sick genius. Um, Zemo is yeah right like he everything just fell into place yeah uh, and, and they do kind of throw you like a little mm. a little swerve there they make you think that there's more Winter Soldiers there were but they actually aren't a factor at all because Zemo kills them all right right which I didn't get that why did he I don't remember what Zemo's plan was through this movie destroy the Avengers. The really was. Basically to get them to destroy themselves. Destroy he, themselves, he, yep. He actually did say, he said, I know I couldn't do it myself, yep. so I'm going to get them to do it themselves. Right. And it all was, so it goes back to that repercussions, right? The payback, revenge, whatever you want to call it. Mm. His family was outside the city of Sokovia during right. Age of Ultron. He wasn't home. He was working. Mm. His dad was w- with his mom and his son, 
And when they drop the city because of all the, you know, whatever, the, the after effects or whatever, they ended up also being killed. Right. And he said it took him days to even find the bodies, and he found his dad still holding his wife and child. So he was, I mean, when he says that, you're like, I get it, right? Yeah. From his perspective. Yeah. And, yeah, he, yeah, to your point, what he said was, I can't take him out. So mm-hmm. he just stirred the pot, dude. Right, right, right. Um, and, and I think Vision at some point said something that was pretty – that goes across all the comics. Like we, we and we talked about this with Batman. Mm. When there were probably there, there were villains, you right. know, mob things like that. Yeah. Guys, you know, snatching purses and all this other kind of stuff. Which I, I saw a, a documentary on PBS about this guy snatched a purse, got sixteen years, dude. Damn. I mean, that's crazy. Anyway, yeah. the whole point was these super villains didn't come out until the Batman start coming. Yes. Out. You know, the Iron Man's come out. Like Vision said, when Iron Man, when Tony Stark announced that he was Iron Man, you know, the, the number of villains, you know, came out exponentially. Right. Absolutely. Yep. So it's like the the the, the superheroes created the super villain mm-hmm. kind of a deal. So. Yeah. Which is funny, you talk about the boys, you see that more blatant in the boys. Remember when Homelander was shipping V overseas to mm-hmm. create super terrorists to have someone to fight? Like right. a whole different dynamic, but sure. you know, where do they get that, you know, from? Um and then, yeah, so we, we end up at this facility at the end with all the Winter Soldiers, and yeah, Zemo's plan is to extract revenge, stir up the pot, which he does masterfully. Also, you talk about little things that set up. Um, he did say that when S.H.I.E.L.D. was dissolved, Black Widow made a lot of um, S.H.I.E.L.D. files public. Right. Which is actually where he got the information about the Winter Soldiers, and eventually, I think that's how he ended up getting the the finding out who was responsible for the mind control, mm-hmm. and then getting the words from that individual to right. con- so by dissolving Shield, the things that they did in Winter Soldier actually caused or allowed Baron Zemo to even have the information he needed. Correct. So, I mean, it's, dude, it's a lot of deep storytelling. Oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. when people are like, oh, the comic book movies are just amusement parts, they're just fun. There's a lot of good yeah. writing that's all intertangled. But if, so maybe you're just too simple. Maybe it's <laughs> there you, you know. You know? Um, and then it, it leads to, you know, uh, probably the highlight of the movie, the mm-hmm. fight between the three mm-hmm. of these guys. Like we talked about a little bit earlier where – Zemo shows Tony that Bucky killed his parents, a flashback that we saw several times throughout the movie, but we didn't see it was Bucky until the last one. Pretty graphic scene for a PG-13, like when he, you know, just punches Howard Stark in the face several times to kill him. Yeah, right. And then he chokes his mom and looks the other way. Mm-hmm. Then there was a, a, a point when um, they were fighting where Tony, I think he's got Bucky kind of locked up, and he asks him, like, you do you even remember them? And then Bucky's like, I remember every single one of them. So you see that as much as he's caused pain to others, he's caused, well, he didn't cause it, but being under mind control, killing these individuals had that effect on him as well. It's almost like um, he was in the backseat of somebody else driving him. Yeah. So he's a passenger in his own body right. watching this stuff happen. So yep. that's why he remembered everything. Yeah. Um, which, which is which is pretty cool. But I'm I'm wondering how they get this that camera shot. That was almost like it was set up. Yeah. You know, like like you, you got like three three or four cameras recording Bucky like right. these people out. How does that? Happen? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there's a little plan there. Maybe sure. Zemo planted it. Who knows? There you go. Um, but then we see this all out fight. We see T'Challa is with Zemo. Because mm-hmm. he's been following your point, he's been following them the whole time. Right. Because at this point now he thinks he wants to kill Zemo, mm-hmm. but then he realizes like, no, that ain't the right thing to do. Right. Um, I thought that was cool too. Like when he uh, Zemo goes to off himself and T'Challa puts his hand there, and he's right. like, oh no, the living's not done with you yet, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. but the the fight was cool. I think um, I liked how Cap had the upper hand until. Tony used his AI to study because it makes sense. Cap's a soldier. Sure. I think, you know, one on one, Cap would tee Tony up. Oh, absolutely. Technology is the only thing that's going to give Tony any type of edge or advantage. Sure. And once he studied his fight mm-hmm. pattern, then he was able to give it back to him. Right. That made sense. Like if you had Tony just come out, you know, teeing off Cap and went to so that doesn't make sense, dude. Yeah, He's yeah. just a, a billionaire who has a cool suit. Yeah. Um, he blows off uh, Bucky's arm. His fight's pretty brutal, dude. Like, they were not holding their punches in this one. Mm-mm. This was a lot different than the airport scene. Yes, it was. Um, and then 
we see that cool shot, which is a comic page um, that we've also seen in Civil War, where Cap has the shield, Tony's blasters, and they're just going right at each other. That was an awesome looking yeah, shot, dude. Yeah, yeah. They they definitely captured some some very iconic comic book shots yeah. in, in this in this movie. Um, and the dynamic with all of them, and you can see, and and it's funny, like you said, they weren't pulling their punches. No, but you can see that. Correct. But you can see that they were pulling their punches at the airport. Yes, you know yep. things like that. So I a lot of cool um, nuances yep. about the movie that made it. You know, above average, I right. think. You know, which is why having the Russo brothers, I think, back is one of the best decisions they've ever made. Right, because that's all directing. Exactly, and then you know, Bucky being able to transform from you know this guy that knows what he's did, and you can see it too. Like mm-hmm. he's a lot of weight on his shoulder. It's like I know I've been killing people for yeah all this, all this time and stuff, and I know that to this transforming to this killer, right? right? Um, so just sh- being able to show that. That, that kind of range in, in acting. Mm-hmm. Definitely directors. Absolutely. So. Um, and then, you know, the, the fight ends um, with Cap basically destroying the suit. Mm-hmm. He's got the, you know, the shield. He almost pulls a, a, what's his name, U.S. agent moment, you know, when he bashes him in the face. But right. we know it's Cap. He's not going to do that. He destroys the suit. Mm-hmm. Fight's kind of over. He's walking away with Bucky. And then Tony has to be petty. He's like... Give me that shield. Right. My dad made that. <laughs> yep. Cap just looks back like, whatever, dude. Yep. Yep. Um, I left this movie liking Captain America a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like, I love what he stands for. I get it. Sure. Um, as much as maybe, I, you know, if I'm him, I probably just let Bucky die. I don't know. Maybe, you know. Yeah. But, um, but I get the standing up for what's right, regardless of who's on the other side. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, and just, I mean, dude, Cap is, you know, I'm joking about it, but Cap is the ultimate best friend. He's the, ultimate, right. he's the guy you want on your side. Yep. You know, that whole, you always hear people say, if I'm going to war, this is a guy I want on my team. Cap's my first choice. Yep. Cause I know he's going to be there the whole time regardless. Yep. Um, and, and it, you know, at times I didn't like Tony's point of view in this, but mm-hmm. then towards the end, you, you also felt for him though, as sure. much as maybe I don't agree, but I feel for what he's going through as a character right. and it set up so much for the future you know infinity war end game because they in in infinity war the avengers was split into a couple teams tony uh-huh. and and cap didn't um have any type of reconciliation until end game and then it was brief because then tony dies so it was um this was a a, a huge kind of cor- another cornerstone movie for the mcu yeah definitely definitely a lot of breakout moments yeah Absolutely. I mean, it set up the whole Spider-Man franchise, yep. Black Panther movie. So <clears throat> I love this movie. One of my all-time favorites. If I'm giving it a, a, a ranking out of 10, Adrian, this is like a dude, 9.6 for me maybe. This is up there. Yeah, it's definitely up there. It's definitely 9.2 and up. Yeah. you know, I'd say the, the only MCU movie that I would put above this, no question, is Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I really got it. Like I'd almost Endgame has obviously the Endgame moments, sure. But as a movie, I'm be more apt to rewatch this one than a lot of other ones. Definitely. So there you have it. There's our deep dive. Next up, Adrian, our hidden gem. I, I think I know who it is. Yeah. Is it Daredevil? It's Daredevil. Look at that. How do I know? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you told me. Yeah. Yep, I see yep. you asked me. Like we ever done Daredevil? Like, yeah. Nope. So I spoiled it, but there it is. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Um, again, it's going to be quick for timing, but, and we're not going to do, um, we're not going to do history on daredevil cause we know who he is. Right. We know wh- wh- how, where he comes from, but basically, um, he's a kid, he's out strolling around Brooklyn or some hell's kitchen. Yep. Right. Somebody stole, uh, uh there was a truck of radioactive material and, he, uh, this blind guy was about to get hit. The kid jumps out, Matt Murdoch, mm-hmm. he jumps out. You know, uh, push the guy out the way, the truck turns over, whatever, spills all this radioactive stuff. And then, you know, not the blind leading the blind, but he's trying to save a blind guy and ends up being blind himself by this radio radioactive. Okay, um, it's material. kind of the blind leading the blind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so once this happens, you know, he's, he's in shock and all this other kind of stuff. And then these things start to happen to him and he doesn't understand what's going on. Okay. Right? Um, so, stick. Uh, this martial artist, kind of in this the same situation, blind, um, but he's like a master martial artist, which is where Matt becomes Matt's mentor. Okay, right? Um, teaches him all this stuff, which is like, well, how does a blind kid in 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 Hell's Kitchen become Daredevil? Well, that's why that's how. 
Yeah. Um, so he goes on to college, becomes um, a lawyer, meets uh, Foggy. Yeah. And and what's her face? Uh, what's her name? Karen. Uh, Karen. Yeah. And you know all this other other stuff ensues. Uh, he and Karen becomes an item. It, it's, it's, it's complex because he doesn't want, you know, it's just like all superheroes. I don't want you, you know, involved. I don't want people coming after you, uh, which I don't understand not telling the person that you're in love with how, does a, how that affects villains coming after them if they know or not. Right. It right. just makes it more confusing to why are you. Yeah. You why know, is everybody trying, trying to kill me? Why, why is everybody <laughs> trying to kill me? I, I right. don't You know, I don't know anything about what's going on. Mm. So I, I never got that angle. Yep. Right. But anyway, so he's it's a, convenient for the plot. Correct. <laughs> so um, he, he doesn't tell Karen and, and, you know, they have this tumultuous relationship. Mm. I don't think foggy ever knows, or maybe he finds out. So anyway, uh, basically Daredevil is the devil of Hell's Kitchen, mm. and he's like this grounded, um, um, like a urban soldier. Yeah, in Hell's Kitchen, you know, and and when he when he first got started, and they say you know some of his his nemesis were ridiculous, you know these ridiculous names, but burst, but basically he started out like Spider Man. Yeah. You know, purse snatchers, you know, uh, robberies, things like that. So his whole goal was basically because nobody really, there wasn't a superhero presence basically in Hell's Kitchen. And, you know, he wanted to take care of his neighborhood. Yeah. So friendly neighborhood daredevil. Right? Got it. Um, then, you know, you get the interaction with uh, Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. And then you got um, Luke Cage. Um, then you got, you know, the rich kid. Uh, Power Man, I mean uh, Iron Fist. Iron Fist, yeah. So they and they become the defenders of Hell's Kitchen, yep. basically, right? So um, that's the short and fast of you know how he became and what he's about. But awesome character, yeah. And I definitely think that you know they've they've nerfed him um, a lot. Um, I, I think they should in in the Netflix movies that um, they did a real good job of him. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they're bringing out what season. four? Four, three or four. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like another season, but it's a reboot, so it's mm. its own thing. But yeah, I guess technically it would be the fourth season, I believe. Yeah. But the fact that they're bringing him out yeah. means that he's popular. Yeah. Um. He he is like a not quite a Batman, but Batman esque. Yes. You know, what I'm saying you know yep. with the you know uh, defending the the little guy and all mm-hmm. those. Kind of, but Batman is mostly about ego. Really. Correct. It's yeah. really about Batman. <laughs> um. So a really good character, and if you saw him in Echo, yeah, it was like he looked like a season three, yes. season four. I mean, his moves. Dude, their fight like, was awesome. Oh, it, it was, dude. It yeah, was the warehouse. And, and the, the the way he was moving around. I mean, that was a seasoned fighter. Mm-hmm. And now, outside of his powers, which I'll get to in a minute, I mean, he's just a basic guy. Yeah, he go gets his ass beat. He gets cut. He gets shot. He's got no healing ability, right? No nope. healing ability whatsoever. Yeah. Dude. Percocex. Yeah. That, that's what that's like. You know, Motrin, Tylenol. Stitches and ice packs. Stitches. Yeah. And, and, you know, his superhero, uh, his his um, healing factor is, um, what's it, the, the nurse. Yeah. There you, you go. Know. So. Claire. Claire. So, a bit, outside of some superhuman powers, yep. he's basically a regular guy. And, I mean, lawyer by day, you know, daredevil by any other time. Yeah. Right. And so his power a broke says, lawyer at that. A broke lawyer. There's a lot at that. for people in Hell's Kitchen who it's a very you know very poor area. Exactly, exactly. So he's kind of like a, what they call him pro bono kind of a yeah, guy. Yeah. Yep. Um, his his firm, <coughs> you know, which he started with Foggy, mm-hmm. is just basically him, Foggy, and Karen, and they just do basic stuff, right? Yep. But um, so his powers are, so no healing factor, um, no super strength. None of that stuff. But as a result, they say when you lose a major sense, your other senses take mm-hmm. over, right? So that happened, but to the nth degree. Yeah. Right? So his hearing is at a peak level. He hears all this stuff. His t- sense of touch is so precise, he can actually read uh, ink on a piece of paper. Not Braille, but just regular really? handwritten ink. Yep. Um his equilibrium is such it's it's pretty much on par with Spider Man's basically. Okay. Um. He he was once he once was able to balance like 
with one hand on top of a stone or some shit, some ridiculous thing. Um, but his equilibrium is, is such. And then with his other senses, it makes him like he's he, he almost has like a is able. It's almost like a spider sense. OK, he can anticipate things based on like his sense of, sense of like uh, he can sense the atmosphere around him so yeah. he can like anticipate things based on your body posture, your, the amount of heat, your heartbeat, which he, right. can, he can hear your heartbeat from across the room or through walls, things like that. So all of those things combine, but then he has this, um, this like echolocation. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's almost like a sonar type right, thing. Right, right, right. Like, right. So, um, I forget what they call it, but anyway, so he has this like echolocation. So he can see like with precision, yeah. like, everything around him even though he can't physically see right so i mean just a badass character um and then the fighting styles that he learned from from stick yeah with this basically uh, basic ability to like precog you know your movements mm -hmm. um and then this precision like radar sense makes him just just an awesome character dude and then you know he hooks, he hooks up with Electra. Yeah, he gets into this whole assassin <laughs> assassin thing. She's she's basically an assassin, she's right? Badass she's badass. She's badass too. Yeah. Um, so it, he he just he's just in this world. Um, and I just think that this world and him alone, because you know I read about him, but I wasn't a real fan of him. But then when the show came out, it was like this dude is pretty awesome, man. Yeah. So I I, I think he is one of those characters that's really underrated or underrepresented um in the shows but i think they 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 finally getting it and they bringing them out um would love to see him in some more crossover stuff not just the hell's kitchen thing but other crossover kind of kind of because he was in like a, like a version of the avengers not the defenders but they it was some other name um for the avengers yeah. So, I think he's definitely been an Avenger at times in the sure. comics. I mean, who the hell hasn't been? I think I'm um, only right. ones like me and you. We're still waiting for our invite, <laughs> but most people have been an Avenger at some point. In time. Right? Uh, me, me, you, and uh, Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, this week is is, is Daredevil, yeah. um, an awesome character. Um, and the thing about it is, is that he does it. Most of his stuff is just brute force. He's a mm -hmm. brute force tactician, right? Yep. And the only thing he has is those cool nunchucks. Uh, which can turn into a, like a staff and do all this other kind of stuff. I mean, he doesn't have the money like Batman, right? Right. No, he don't have any money. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't have um, healing factors like a Wolverine. He's not immortal. I mean, he's basically just a guy. I mean, those senses help him definitely. Um, and and de and but he he also doesn't have any super human, you know, um, expertise and stuff. He learned through trial and error with Stick. To become the, the the badass that he is, yeah, you know, old so, school, yeah, old school. Yep. He didn't. He doesn't have some special powers that make him, you know, super whatever. I mean, yep. in that way, he's like Batman because Batman he he went around the world, being you know, uh, learning how to be the Batman, right? And so this guy with stick, I mean, no money, but yeah. he is what he is, dude. It's um, I love that Netflix show. Yeah. They did, especially the first season. Mm -hmm. It's so much justice, the brutality. Kingpin, the, his representation in there, his portrayal mm -hmm. was amazing. And right. there, just, I, I'm so, I think that's one of the things I'm so excited about the Dare, Daredevil Born Again show mm -hmm. is it's back to the basics. It's those two. Right. We're going to get to see more of that. We need to see that same level of brutality, it's story writing, but with. The MCU's polish mm -hmm. with more budget, bigger, sure. you know. Um, so yeah, I, dude, I've I've always been a fan of. Um, I don't say always, but since I mean the the Ben Affleck Daredevils would introduce me to the character. Right. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was what it was for it, the yeah. time that it was. Again, it's like when they first came out. I th I think when they first came out with comic book movies, yeah, they were very cautious yes. because they didn't know how people would take it. Correct. Yeah. Because before that, they had what the Hulk on on TV. Yeah, Lou um, Ferrigno. <laughs> Lou Ferrigno. What else they had? Uh, they had you know the Batman from back from the Adam, Adam West, West days. Yep. Um, you know then so you know when Spider Man start 
coming out and things like that. They, I think they were real cautious. Yeah. Um. About about how that they was early. To dude, it yeah. was like ninety nine, I think. So it was before X Men, before, yep. um, or maybe it was right around X Men time, but mm -hmm. before Spider Man movies and well before the MCU. Actually, they had a, a Spider Man movie in the I think the seventies. Okay. <laughs> um. This guy, uh, this real tall guy. I forget. I I forget his name. But yeah, yeah they had a, they had a Spider Man way back then too. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, that was, it was what, but the thing about it was Daredevil such a cool character that even with the goofiness behind that movie, yep. it still wasn't horrible. And then the, the version that we've seen now, you mentioned Elektra, the, um, a, a Lodi, Lodi Young plays Elektra in mm. the Daredevil series. Dude, I really like her Elektra. Yeah. She's badass. And I think they did a great job of portraying the character of Elektra in that show. Um, so Anyway, great, um, great hidden gem. Um, and and dude, the Daredevil powers have always been like partly confusing but intriguing because it's like he can't see but he can, you right. know, like it. And but in the show, they do a good job of kind of showing you what that would look like, right? With right. The um, it's almost like everything is red and he can locate everything, but it's not like picture. Um, it's not like photo realistic, you right. know. It, it's more of a echo sonar type, like you said. So, um, no, the Spider-Man I was talking about was from the 70s. It was the Amazing Spider-Man TV series um, starring Nicholas Hammond. Okay. Um, went two seasons, 13 episodes. Damn. So, um, 1977 to 79. Shit. So, another... Another one of those things that snuck kind of snuck in there, right? Yeah, yeah. I told you, I've been around for a long time, dude. <laughs> well, I don't think we'll be doing a deep dive into that no. show. <laughs> no. no, I just wanted people to understand that, hey, they've been trying for a long time right. to get comic books out there when they first came out. Correct. Um, they were really cautious. Yep. And I think that they just said, fuck it with Daredevil, dude, yeah. because that show is just awesome. Yep. I think it's like they always knew there was something there in comics, sure. but it took them a long time. I mean, we're talking decades mm -hmm. to perfect it. Sure. And that's where we're at now is where they know how to take a comic book story and put it on the screen. Right, right. It's just a matter of which ones do they choose and who do they, you know, put Yeah, but the it. fear is also like, I mean, based on directorship, like yep. how ridiculous they make it or how much. Right. I mean, I, I, I do think we're kind of getting too far out with this multiverse stuff. Yeah. Uh, we need to kind of bring it back. Yep. But um, hopefully they, they also hopefully they do agree. that with Secret Wars. So, all right, Adrian, we're going to wrap this up with everyone's favorite segment, Agree to Disagree. Let's do it. Maybe not everyone's favorite. I don't uh, know, maybe but maybe not. So I'm going to rapid fire a handful of my opinions at you. You're going to let me know if you ag agree or disagree. Let's do it. All right. Um, number one, Civil War is the best Captain America movie. Haven't rewatched it. I would agree. Civil War is better than the Avengers and Age of Ultron. Like combined? No, I, no separately. Of it, I, I would agree with that. Okay. Iron Man can't beat Hulk. I agree. Battinson is the best on-screen Batman. I disagree. Black Panther would beat Cap. All day long. All what, day what, long. Whatever may have came after that statement. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yep. No, you, there's you nothing after that. that. You ever seen that? There's a cartoon. I'm going to dig it up. There's a there's like a, like a YouTube video yep. of uh, Cap and and um, Black Panther going at it. Mm -mm. Whooped his yeah. ass. I bet. Laid him out. Well, you agree. Um, yeah, I agree. Cap should have let them end Bucky. I, yeah, because... Yes, he's I gotta agree. go, dude. He's like a rabid dog, like bro. You've you've <laughs> bit every member of this family. Right. You even bit Grammy. Okay, yep. Grammy's eighty two. You bit her. She didn't even know yep. whose dog you were. She has dementia. You fucking bit her too. <laughs> Damn it, Bucky. You yeah, know, yeah, you should let him go at some point. Pull them, pull the old yeller, dude. Bring him out back <laughs> behind the shed and just you know, there you go. Been a, been a long run, you know. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, Spider Man Four should take place in Battle World. I agree. And last, to, to you know, tie into the Daredevil theme you just had going, Elodie Young is a better Electra than Jennifer, yeah, than Jennifer Gardner. I agree. There you have it. So the one disagree, Battinson. I knew you were disagreeing on that one, but I just <laughs> uh, that one's more for you all out there. Who agrees with me? You know, Battinson. I I I agree that Battinson is a very good Bruce Wayne Batman for year two. Yeah, which okay. is what they're portraying him right. as. So, but the best Batman ever? No, you, you still say is who? Christian, uh, Christian Bale. Bale. Yeah. Yep. 
matter of fact, he's a very good Bruce Wayne Batman combination. Yes, I think I agree. Yep, like I like Keaton's Batman, but his Bruce Wayne is like who the fucks this guy? Like, <laughs> looks small. Looks like he's just like like Bruno Mars playing Batman or something. But anyways. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That's the show. A little, little extra in the bonus minutes this week. Yeah, Over, we won't charge minutes. you any more for the overtime, okay? <laughs> That's on us. That's free. We had uh, a lot to get out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we appreciate y'all being along with us for the ride. Um, yep, take a look at, you know, me and Adrian are back in our regular attire. There, you know, yeah, a handful yeah. of people did chime in. They said, you are the Wolverine of this duo. Yeah, yeah okay. so I think I think we'll go with that. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I, I, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, so we both we both have amazing, you know, um, healing factors. You sure. know, we're both funny. Um, I'm a little weird, more weird, I guess. A little more unpredictable, maybe. <laughs> okay. Adrian can be more angry at times. Sure. It's a good balance, of, you know? Of, so. of course, I can be more angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have any problem tapping into yeah, that, yeah. you know? So, And I like to, you know, jump into the tomfoolery a little bit, you know? so Is that the, uh, the little um, uh, Deadpool dog? Yes, it is. It's dude, dog I, pool. Do I... <laughs> <laughs> probably had nightmares about after watching that show. Well, you're going to have That's some more. That's the most... <laughs> weirdest looking thing anyway it is but it fit the movie because it's it deadpool did. you know so anyways if you've not already hit the subscribe button like this share this um and we'll be back at you next week dude next week i think we got a little little agatha debuting this week so okay. a couple episodes okay. check out this you know hocus pocus wannabe or maybe it'll be really good who knows uh, who knows you never know so but we will discuss it next week and we will see you back right here on only comics adrian thanks for coming out absolutely guys thanks for joining go to onlycomicsmerch.com to support the show and we'll see you right here next week.